Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Strange Normal. My name is Brad. We talk about the stranger things that happen in your normal life to give you a biblical understanding of what is going on. And there is a lot going on tonight. So let me fill you in. This episode is so packed with stuff that I I, I, I might have to conclude it some other time, to be honest with you. Do you guys want to go and explore the amazing... Uh, weird stuff that's going on with with uh, this government and stuff, but not only that, but the real stuff that's happening. I mean, this is I'm not taking from ulterior sources here. This is going to be from WikiLeaks. This is going to be from mainstream media news. This is going to be what your government is actually saying about this stuff in mainstream right now, and what they want someone named Tom DeLong to talk about to you. He's freely admitting that he's producing multi-level propaganda in books and movies and all over the place to tell you more about what's going on and what the government's doing with a strange problem called UAPs. And this episode is going to be the one you want to you want to give to your family during Thanksgiving. We're doing this a week before Thanksgiving. I think it's a week before Thanksgiving. Anyway, before I get too far into just jabbering here, let me bring in all of our guests tonight. We got uh, a few different scenes here. I finally found the one I wanted. Guys, welcome. Um, let me start with you, Matthew, real quick. Matthew, how are you doing? I'm hanging in there, Bradley. Just <laughs> waiting for the... <laughs> allergy season to conclude so it's nothing new but otherwise i'm having a great time and i'm very excited about what you've got for us because you've been hyping this up a little bit a little more <laughs> than usual so you, you must have stumbled upon some pretty uh eye-opening things well i, I think and i want to get on to uh, to talk to you two uh other two guests tonight as well but you know you're absolutely right because i think this is this is a fascinating topic. We're going to get into the movie, not at, I mean at the very end, but what we're going to cover is a lot of stuff that number one we've seen a little bit, but we haven't really expounded upon ever on this channel, and we've even touched on a little bit of the sound bites in Starfall, the original documentary, at the beginning of this channel, one of the first movie, uh, videos on this channel. But I, I I'm excited because uh, I think a lot of people are going to be pretty surprised at what's being said here. And uh, especially if you have family members Thanksgiving that haven't seen this before, they're going to want to be, they're going to be go, aha, really? I mean, I, I went to church this weekend and I talked to people that hadn't heard about it. And I, they said, what do you do? And I said, well, I run a podcast right now talking about the spiritualism in the last days. And let me tell you, do you know your government's on the news, uh, on, on, on the horn right now? They're saying that they're seeing giant glowing lights above their most uh, uh, expensive and secretive uh, military things. Uh, ships, Navy, and all this other stuff. Uh, planes in the sky. And they said, oh, no, I didn't know. Tell me more. So we went on and on and on. And I explained. And I gave them one of the Starfall cards I have. They are just amazed by this stuff. And I think everyone should be, especially if you are, I mean, us uh, Christians are like, I don't want you to need to know about that. You do. There's a deception coming, coming, and you need to know what's going on here because I think it's going to just hit everyone like a ton of bricks. Anyway, I, I, I digress. Wendy, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> just got over a cold too, but... Looking forward to having something good to share at Thanksgiving. Uh, it's always helpful when I get to jump on because um, some of my family members are a little more apt to watch when I'm like, hey, check out what I've been doing. They're like, oh, okay. So this will be great. Very I'll good. Share. Very, very good. And Travis, where are you? I can't see you. Why can't I see you? I hope I said your name right. Travis, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. I, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Can you see me? I think so. For some reason, I have a teleprompter here. I'll show you just a little bit. And it's, uh, I can barely see you down here. And that's my trouble right here because okay. you're in the corner. But um, uh, so anyway, if I can't see you or if you're waving at me, I'm sorry. <laughs> <I can laughs> no, that's, that's all. all right. But um, yeah, other than not being seen by you, I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm excited about the topic. I'm excited to join these three other prestigious individuals as we dig into these <laughs> topics. I'm I'm excited to see what we're going to dig into. OK, very good. 
Well, let's dig right into it. I, I wanna, I, I've been kind of struggling to go through this because I don't know if you've, I grew up with this genre of music and this was before my time where I really started digging into what exactly it is that I need to uh, not listen to. I just listened to everything because I thought it was cool. And um, Blink-182, Sum 41, you know, all these little bands of that era what were interesting to me. And so to see Tom DeLong doing this stuff in here is, is just fascinating because he's on a roll and he's on a roll in the wrong direction. And trying to... Uh, take out some of the uh, expletives from his documentaries, from his music, from everything was quite a challenge in putting this together. But uh, I want to make it a clean episode for you. But with that said, I want to preface it. If I missed one, I'm sorry. There's just so many. In fact, the movie we're going to go over, I counted in the first seven and a half minutes, I think there were 32 swear words that I had to cut out. And so we didn't use that scene because um, that's one every 14, 12 or 14 seconds. Anyway, uh, okay. we try we try to keep this 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 clean as possible. Sorry, Wendy, go ahead. I just said yikes. <laughs> that's a lot of work <laughs> to cut it all out. So so we we're we're gonna go through this. We're uh, with a fine tooth comb. But the the interesting part is not the movie because the movie is the part we're gonna cover at the very uh, last part. The interesting part to me is. Um, what he said in 2019. This is kind of uh, where the a synopsis, if you will, of what he thinks is going on here and wh- how this thing all started. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you a concert because Blink 182 apparently got back together and they're doing a tour or some kind that goes through 2024, and it started in 2019. Someone recorded from the audience what he says about this stuff. I'll, I'll, I I kind of want to give you an idea of what he thinks he's doing with this new system he's created. Now watch this. When we started Angels and Airwaves, the idea was, how do we take, you know, I was like thinking like if Blink was about like growing up, maybe Angels is about being an adult, you know? Taking all these things that you feel, because every single person feels so alone. Doesn't matter how in love you are, how great your family is, it doesn't matter. You still kind of walk around going, God, this is a weird place, and how do I get by? Well, I was like, maybe we can take some of those feelings and put them into songs. And I remember if I come out with this big word, love, the punkers are going to be pissed. <laughs> but I didn't give a fuck, because I'm punk. That's what we do. Well, I was then thinking, well, maybe if we make films, people would understand the message a little bit more. So I created this little company called To The Stars. And the hopes was to communicate these themes in a louder way, you know? Well, one of the stories I wanted to make movies about and sing about was a very controversial story. You see, one year ago, I was pretty sure I would never play music again on the stage. I was really sure of that. Because I went around into, uh, I made my way into the US government. <laughs> and I know that sounds wild. There's probably a few people here like, what did you just say? Well, I walked around, uh, knocked on a few doors and I said, hey, I have this idea. I think young people are ready for the conversation of a lifetime. I think they can take it. Because we have this idea that we're all so separate from each other, but we're not. All the people your age in different countries across the world, I felt that if the government would have this one conversation, it might pull us all together. So I begged, and I begged, and I talked about all my ideas. And all these guys with all these stars on their shoulders would look at me and say, we don't believe anything you're saying, but we want to hear more. Well, guess what? It worked. And a couple weeks ago, you might have seen a few articles with my name in it. And you thought that was a big deal. It's not. There's some big shit coming. I took a bunch of these people that I met from the CIA to the DOD, to the OSD, 
to some other places I can't say. And they've all come together and To The Stars became To The Stars Academy of Arts and Science. And some shit's about to drop that's gonna change your life. It's gonna pull all of us together and to celebrate all these things that I set myself out to do for all of us, it worked. I'm gonna ask you to sing this song for me. It goes like this. All right, I'm gonna pause it right here just for a second because I'm not gonna sing the song on the show because I'm trying not to get demonetized, trying not to get uh, banned from YouTube, but I do wanna show you exactly what is being said in this song because this kind of reveals what this channel's about and talking about this uh, strange phenomenon. Now, this is called Aliens, Aliens Exist. This is something he made a long time ago, and so he's been in this uh, idea for quite some time. I'm going to read some of this lyrics to you. You decide what yourself what he's trying to say here. He says, Hey, Mom, there's something in the back room. Hope it's not those creatures from above. Those creatures from above? I hope you, re uh, you used to read me stories as if my dreams were boring. We all know conspiracies are dumb. And he says, what if people knew that these are real? I'd leave my closet door open all night. I know the CIA would say, what you hear is all hearsay. Wish someone would tell me what was right. Well, we do have someone that tells, me, tells us what was right. Wait a second. So is he asking us to tell what the aliens, the aliens are going to tell us what was right? Then the chorus comes in, up all night long, and there's something very wrong. And I know it must be late, uh, since I've been gone since yesterday. I'm not like you guys. I'm not like you. And he goes into the last uh, verse. I am still a skeptic. Yes, you know me. Been this way, or been best friends, and will be till we die. I got an injection of fear from the abduction. My best friend thinks I'm just telling lies. All right. Up all night long, and there's something very wrong, and I know it must be light. Been gone since yesterday. I'm not like you guys. I'm not like you. One more. Dark and scary. This is the bridge. Explanation, information. Nice to know you. Paranoia. Where's my mother? Bio father. Up all night long, and there's something very wrong, and it, I know it must be late. It's, I've been gone since yesterday, and I'm not like you guys. Twelve majestic lies. Wow, where'd that last line come from? Well, we kind of know where that last line came from. And I kind of want to bring you guys in here uh, to, to talk about this a little bit. Because I, I, uh, I'm going to go into this a little bit further. We're going to look at an about section about this song on another website to try to figure out what's happening here. But, uh, so, so he, a lot's happening here. I hear inklings of uh, consolidating religion. I hear inklings of we have to listen to those things from above. Wow, you just went into warp, Travis. That was super cool. I'm not sure what just happened there. <laughs> Woo. We're just, we're just, yeah. Here we go. <laughs> but I, I, um, this is kind of set in the bound of what he wants to talk about. Let me, let me, let me just iterate from the very beginning. He thinks, and this is what he wants to do. He wants to talk about love, and he says. If I bring out this love, the punkers are going to be very mad. <laughs> That's what he said just a minute ago. And so he said he created this, uh, this group called To The Stars to talk about how we are all one and that we all need to talk about how there is a bigger picture happening here that the government wants to reveal, and they've been unsuccessful at it. And we're going to dig further into what happened in the government. And he's going to tell a 15-minute story. It's going to be a little bit long. I'm going to chop it up into about five-minute sections. But it's, you're going to be on the edge of your seat listening to this because it's, it's really, really fascinating. I don't care if he's um, telling – I mean, I do care if he's telling lies. But if he is, when he's telling these lies um, about what is being portrayed, I guess I could say, whatever happened to him, I believe him 100% because of what is revealed in WikiLeaks emails and all this other stuff that's coming out that I'll show you in a second. But uh, what do you guys think about what has happened so far? Do you have any comments on, on what was, uh, was kind of said here before I move on into exactly what's going on? I'm going to start with uh, if, Matt, if, if you, any of you don't have a comment, that's totally fine. Don't, don't, don't think you have to come up with something because we got such a long show. I, don't wanna, I want to squeeze it as fast as possible. But uh, Matthew, I'm going to start with you. It was really funny when I first started looking into this whole phenomenon and saw that Tom DeLonge was a player in this game because beforehand I had listened to Blink-182 
uh, I, w- I wouldn't call myself like a Blink-182 fan, but I certainly uh, you know, went through some of their catalog and their songs, and they always did have that punk kind of edge to them. I mean, the, the, the cursing just spilling out of his mouth very casually, that's just... Uh, that, that carries over into the music as well and some of the themes. But now he's saying that was kind of growing up. That was an adolescent phase. And here I am. I want to present a more mature face and I want to be a little more grown up. And I think the name of that band, because he's not performing with Blink-182 there. He's performing with Angels, Angels and, and Airwaves. Airwaves. Mm-hmm. And that name alone says a lot. Uh, and, and just the band logo as well. It kind of has the A's and then like the a is inverted i I think you know if anyone looked at it you could probably shuffle those things around and get some interesting shapes out of them (laughs) but overall just seeing that tom tom delong being such a a player in this game it's weird but it makes me think about daniel three when uh nebuchadnezzar using musicians to sound the cue for worship Mm. I imagine back in ancient Babylon, there were some well-known names and well-known musical groups that were coming out, and they were all in unison coming together and saying, yeah, here we are. This is about love. This is about worshiping Nebuchadnezzar. You know, may he reign forever. we got a big gold statue. We love the guy so much. You ready? We're about to rock out. And then they hit their chords, and everyone's supposed to drop down. And just him giving that big monologue and casually strumming away. You know, there's something to that. He didn't have to sit there and just do a couple of chords as if we're sitting around a campfire with him. And uh, he's just <laughs> going to go, go on and on. But uh, that, that music it is, it's, it's moving and motivating. So I, I think in addition to the Hollywood celebrities who will move you with their acting, uh, the musicians, I, I think they're even more powerful oh, yeah. Uh, at invoking emotion with with the music Mm -hmm. 100% Wendy yeah absolutely I was going to say something along the same lines with that monologuing it's like you know he's taking every opportunity he can to just you know witness to whatever he he believes needs to get out there because it's a concert like what does it have to do with all the rest of his projects if anything I feel like he's going on this this tour just to further his agenda here because I mean, how, how long has he been out of the music arena? It's been a while. Right. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, music strikes it, it like strokes a chord in your in your heart and your emotions that otherwise mm-hmm. you know you can't really reach. There's literally certain you know frequencies that music um, uses and opens up like your cellular level. It's kind of crazy when you look at the the scientific research behind frequencies and what it can do to you, but. That's fascinating. Yeah. I didn't know all that. Wow. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to see those studies. If you can post those in the Discord where we we all talk, <laughs> that would be fantastic yeah. because I think we could do a amazing study on that. And I want to take an opportunity. By the way, what was the Discord? If if you want to join the Discord as a private community of about 70 of us, we all talk about this stuff every day. We try to figure out exactly what's going on. Join us through patreon.com slash normal. And uh, join us. I mean, we're, we're all Patreon members, and that's what we do. And if you're in there, you can join us on the program like we're doing right now with the discussion. So, um, Travis, what do you think about this? Well, for one, I think consensus-wise, that is probably the worst Tom DeLonge song of all time. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> lyrically, I think it was pretty unpleasing. Uh, but, but of everything he said, what stood out the most uh, was definitely when he said it's going to bring us all together, mm-hmm. and 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 yeah. and Jesus is what brings us all together. Jesus is the actual unifying force of truth, and whatever he is pointing to ain't Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I, I'm curious as to how many people who are in love with Jesus are going to see this thing that is supposed to bring everybody together, and hopefully they'll run the other way. But I imagine it's going to be fantastical. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, this this is, and what he said was uh, also uh, wish someone would tell me what was right. I, I, there has been someone telling you what was right, and they did come from essentially outer space. So I think that's 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 interesting that you totally missed it, Tom. <laughs> but I I want to get further into what in the world is going on here by looking at this about section of this song, just so you get the idea. 
of what's going on here. I'm going to read this as I put it on the screen. Aliens Exist is a song about leader Tom DeLonge's belief in aliens. Tom, who has a strong fascination and belief in extraterrestrial life and even claims to have made contact, wrote the song. Following his departure from the band in 2015, Tom DeLonge decided to devote time to the exploration of unidentified aerial phenomena. This is called UAP. This is what we discuss on this channel. In 2016 interview with Mike.com. Tom DeLong dismissively commented on the song. Mike, um, how many people have made the joke about your Aliens Exist song in relation to this project, Secret Machines? Now, we're going to get into Secret Machines in just a second. But um, Tom says, <clears throat> he laughs and says, yeah, isn't it the weirdest thing? It's weird that people remember that song. It's like uh, an, an eighth album track from like 20 years ago. So he's like, yeah, this is this is not a big deal compared to what I'm actually doing here. Um, and it's what I'm doing is, is actually a big deal. And so let's get into what in the world Tom is doing with this. Because um, I'd like to dig further into that scenario. But before we do, let's hear from Tom himself about what he thinks about some different things. Watch this. You know, I don't know if it... It added to my uh, my take. I, I've never believed that UFOs were as simple as just you know a life, you know some kind of life form from another planet. I always thought it was much more complex than that. Um, you know, this to me, I thought that Jacques Vallée w w and John Keel they were both offering explanations that were that were really making somebody think about the absurdity of what UFOs do when people have some type of contact or the abduction experiences or all the cattle mutilations and crop circles and just the weird stuff that it's that it's that it's doing uh, and and that even religious stuff um, and, and the messages it's telling people so what I'm I have a company called to the stars and and what we're doing is do uh, kind of communicating large themes and ideas and in, in what's called is transmedia where you do multi-platform releases on a subject so and that's no different than what you see on your big Marvel or DC Comics movies or stuff that Disney does. Even Star Wars, where it's a franchise, it's an idea that lasts for many years. And they do a lot of movies. They'll do animations. They'll do books or whatever. Um, Secret Machines is uh, is like that. Okay. Wow. Wow. There's a lot packed in there. Um, let me let me just highlight a couple things and I'll let you guys comment on it. And then we'll go right into Tom DeLonge's, his behind the scenes and how he got involved in the government and how we know this is legit and not just some story Tom's making up. Um, what he said there was was kind of key. And so let me bring that up. He says, number one, that UFOs, UIPs, all this stuff, it's, it's a very religious thing because they're bringing out more... Uh, every time something like this happens, we hear more about religion. Why are they coming all the way down here to talk about religion? Uh, maybe someone can comment on that. But, but before that, he also said that, they're, that what he's trying to do is communicate large themes, large themes uh, that last for a long time. And then he compared his, his system, his business of, um, what was it called? His business was called um, To the Stars. He compared it to Disney. Now, Disney has had a long, 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 and he, he, he admitted to this. He says, look, Disney's trying to c communicate large themes in their productions, in many forms of multimedia. He knows what's going on. If he knows what's <laughs> going on, how does not everyone else know what's going on here? Disney is trying to con uh, communicate large themes, and so is he. What is he essentially saying here? He says, I'm creating propaganda. I'm creating propaganda so that uh, I can change the world's idea of what's going on here, right? I'm going to let each one of you talk about this, and then we're going to get into some of the longer videos about uh, what Tom is actually saying and his his uh, his a long time ago pa uh, a podcast about this. Uh, Matthew, let's start with you. Tom, again, is on point with his branding. He calls his band Angels and Airwaves. He labels his book Secret Machines, and he uses a K instead of a C to do Secret Machines. And the company is called To The Stars, which says it all. He's bringing you to the stars. In Revelation 12.4, we see, uh, speaking about Satan when he was cast out of heaven, and his tail drew the third part mm. of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. 
that's what's going on here. I can't help but think Tom DeLong more than other people. I know that we go over a bunch of different personalities on this show, and some of them seem to be <clears throat> more aware than others. Just the things that he's said, talking about how the alien phenomenon is closer to angels and demons in the Bible. He has <clears throat> all of this really pointed language about the topic. Yeah. On some level, you just got to say, has this guy really been initiated? And does he know <laughs> whose side he's really fighting on? I think he has been. I mean, he saw, I mean, we, we've seen that he, oh man, do I even want to go down this rabbit hole? Oh, this is going to, uh, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Um, you have I, I hadn't I didn't put this in this episode, but we have pictures of him being uh uh what do you call it? Indoctrinated, inundated, put put into the uh the Masonic lodge and is it like a thirty three degree Mason or whatnot? Is that is that true? I don't know. I just know I've seen pictures of him with the bib and everything on, right? I don't know <laughs> the bib. <laughs> it's an apron, <laughs> but <laughs> it's uh, funny, I kinda like the bib. Uh, I don't think he's ever divulged what degree he is a, he's attained to. Uh, I imagine that 33 wouldn't be out of his reach, especially given how often he can just sit down with high-ranking military individuals and people from all these different organizations. He just gets a pass. He walks in and has lunch with them like it's no big deal. But, uh, yes, there are videos of him and his Mason's regalia, uh, or not, not videos, sorry, uh, pictures of him in that but i don't know as far as the degree i couldn't speak to but definitely is uh is a freemason for sure wendy do you have anything to comment on yeah i mean he's definitely using his fame and his notoriety as a his golden ticket right so i feel like he he explains i don't know if it's just in his book or elsewhere my um knowledge of him is basically in the books i i don't know a lot about tom delong outside of what i've read from secret machines and um the nonfiction that follows but um it, it's clear he's been the one tasked to disclose what the government wants to disclose and the fact like matthew said in the bumper he says um what we know of aliens is that they are very closely related to demons what people would consider demons in the bible and yet he's still pushing for the disclosure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, does he have absolutely no religious convictions whatsoever? Well, if he's a Freemason, I mean, that kind of sums it up. But it just kind of goes to show, yeah, he has an agenda. Of course he does. And it's not actually too far from Disney's agenda because they're pushing the occult. I mean, basically, that's what aliens are. They're all related. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fascinating. And we're actually going to prove that. Uh, what you said there, we're going to prove that from what he said himself, that he says he believes right. these things are uh, uh, heavily ties to demonic activity. Whatever it is, they don't like humans, period, he says. Um, I'm not even sure if I got that clip in here, but I'm sure it's in one of the clips uh, from the very beginning of the bumper of this episode. Um, Travis, uh, any thoughts before we begin the, 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 the history of what's going on here and how he got involved in the government from his own lips? Uh, m- Musicians want to push messages, and uh, it generally they want to tell you something. Uh, some don't. Some just sing the beat and say something. You're like, what does this even mean? But this is a musician <laughs> that wants to tell you something very, very specific, mm-hmm. and uh, and he's trying to build credibility. And so what is he doing in this, in this whole lead-up? We've already seen he's trying to build credibility. He's trying to tell you why you should believe him, and then he's inviting you to maybe, hopefully, in his own mind, seemingly – believe something new about reality due to whatever he can show you from this point forward, he wants to change your mind. And uh, that should put everybody on guard who seemingly is being told what they should believe about reality from a different source. Right, 100%. And I, I think it's it's fascinating that he freely admits that these things are have uh, no good intent, but we should, hey, maybe this will change our lives. And uh, <laughs> it's yeah. going to change our lives, all right. Let's start, let's not ta- start talking to him. Um, I actually have more information about his religious and what he believes about that further on into the clip because in the movie, I mean, anybody who writes a script, which I have, I mean, he's in the credits as one of the writers, the main writer of the script, um, they put themselves in here and they, they they write their 
ideas into the characters. I mean, that's he's really said that. It's propaganda. So we're going to look and see what he believes about religion, what he said in different articles, and what uh, we're going to actually <clears> see <throat> the parts of the movie, too. So, But first, let's dump right straight into this podcast from uh, Coast to Coast AM from 2016. Man, I put all these clips through uh, YouTube's algorithm, and none of them came back as, as strikes. So <sighs> cross your fingers and say a prayer. Here we go. Uh, let's do this. Let's see if I can find it. So uh, I got that opportunity. I went up and I did the introduction to the crowd, and then I got the five minutes uh, to sit down alone and, and say whatever it was I wanted to say. So at that time, I didn't say anything about this, this subject. I um, just said, hey, I have an idea for a project. And this project, I think if it's done correctly, will reverse the cynicism that people have about government and what so what he's doing i mean just gonna preface it right now he's he's in the government they've asked him to come talk about something he said i'll only do it if i get to talk to some one of the dudes that's in that's i'm being presented to and he says okay i got the time with him i'm gonna talk to him in in the u.s government now watch this people have about the you know frankly the military industrial complex i think that if i do this um you, you know places like this and other arms of the government would would be would be happy that it got communicated, and but I but I didn't bring up anything that was you know. Um, you didn't I, mention UFOs. You don't mention UFOs. Don't even do that because you won't. You'll get kicked right out of the door. You know? So uh, he goes, okay, that that's great. Um, and I said, can I come up in a couple of weeks and tell you more about it? Absolutely. So a couple of weeks go by, then I come back up. I go through four layers of security. I go through machine guns, guys with machine guns. And then I get escorted into a very specific building that's with a bunch of buildings. This is somewhere out in the middle of the desert somewhere. And, uh, and then I go through two layers of electronic code entry systems. And then the, you hear the locks go, you know, they make their sounds and the doors open up. Now I'm in a hallway. And that hallway has speakers lining the ceiling and just playing white noise, kind of like TV static. Um, and that's there so you don't hear anybody's conversations. Uh, and the, and the, the hallway also has a series of doors, and all the doors have kind of like those big rotary locks, like a safe lock on them. So then we, so we go through that, that hallway, and then they just twist the, the knobs on the doors, and then you hear the big sound, and that door opens up, and now I'm in the center of the building where the top uh, three engineers work with the, the head of the company. And so I walk in, and they're sitting there, and they're ready for what it is I wanted to, to pitch them. So, you know, I'm nervously trying to figure out what I'm going to say. I, I had no plan for even bringing up UFOs then either. I was smarter than that. So we're talking, and one person apparently did a bunch of research on me and knew that I was all into the subject. So halfway through the conversation, uh, this person says, so what about all the conspiracy stuff that you're in into? And just so now I'm being eyeballed by three very important people, and I'm just totally got caught, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, what am I going to do right now? So I, I try to talk my way out of it, and then in comes the head of the company, the big, big dude, uh, and, and uh, kind of save the moment, but at the same time, you know, uh, he got introduced to the conversation right at that point. So right when he, right, you know, I, I said, you know, you come in at a very interesting part of the conversation. Uh, this person brought up, you know, the whole UFO issue with me. Um, I just want you to know that uh, I don't plan on, you know, treating that disrespectfully with this project. And then I got interrupted, and the head guy says, we cannot be involved with anything that has anything to do with that subject, especially since there has been absolutely no evidence whatsoever that it exists. So, bam, I'm just cut off right there. And now I'm, my heart's racing, and I'm like, where do I do? So the only thing that I can think of at the moment is I said, well, Edgar Allan Mitchell, the sixth man to walk on the moon, is out telling all the young people of the world that this is real. So we have a credibility issue that we have to attack, but we don't have to attack it here or now, and we could talk this through. It's just something that young people think, and I want you to know a little bit more about my project. And so I got my way through. I was like, oh, my God, I, I'm still here. So they said, okay, continue. So that specific meeting ended, and then I just said, you know, uh, hell with it. I said, sir, can I speak to you for five minutes alone? This is the, this is the Tom that even my old band members know. Of. <laughs> you know, I'll just go for something. Uh, this is the punk rock kid inside of me, right? 
so uh, and he goes, sure. And so the other people kind of look at me weird, and they're like, okay, so we leave. And I kind of looked at them, so they did. So they stood up, and I, I, I shut the door. And now I'm in the middle of all these different layers of security, and I'm sitting with this person, I, and I just, I just go for broke. I just go, this is exactly what I said. I want you to understand something. And, and, I, and I sit down two feet in front of him, and he's staring at me in the suit. And I go, I understand the national security implications about, about what I'm about to say. Um, I am not naive to the, to the topic. Um, and uh, I, I think if you hear me out, you're going to see that there's merit in what I'm about to propose. And, uh, and, he goes, well, and he goes, well, what topic are you talking about? And I go, UFOs, sir. Now, this is what I want to try and do. And so then I just laid out this entire secret machines project idea. And I said, I'm going to send, and I said, but over the past 30 years, there's been a program to indoctrinate people to the idea that this might be real. But the problem is, is all the young adults of the world, they use the Internet. They have iPhones. They talk to each other much quicker than people ever have. So this program that everyone's been following from the 50s is far outdated. It's antiquated. People have surpassed it, and now they don't trust you guys. Now they don't like you guys. Now they graduate from MIT, and they want to work for Elon Musk, and they don't want to work here. Help, help me help you guys. And, um, and he, then he stops me, because I said, frankly, there's been some bad things that have happened for the past 30 years on the subject. And he stops me, and I'm kind of going, okay, so now I'm in trouble. I just went right into this stuff. What's going to happen? And, and he looks at me. He takes a breath, and he goes, what kind of bad things has the government done with this subject? Very, very like calm and, 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 and staring me straight in the eyes. And so I came up with a couple, a couple things that I can't say here. And, um, and, and I said, if you allow me to do this, what I'm trying to do, then, then, then I'm going to ask you for some help. I need advisors. I need people to help guide me so I don't keep disinforming people. I will not do that anymore. We need to tell the truth. And I just, you know what I said at the time? I said, you've got to picture those little chickens running across the road and someone's guiding them. I'm all, I'm that little chicken and I'm racing, but I don't want to get hit by a car along the way, you know. And, uh, but it was no joke. When there, was nothing, there was nothing to laugh at during this time. So I said, I'm going to send you something. I want you to read it. And please, if you find anything about it good, you know, uh, if there's any kind of merit in this at all, I would just just respond any way you can because I didn't think you could respond in an email or anything. He goes, okay, thank you for that, and then then the meeting was done. So what I did was, the nonfiction books that we've been working on right next to the Secret Machines novel and, and parallel has it's a it's a thesis of the UFO phenomenon. So I took the prologue to that thesis and I sent it to him. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, what did I do? What did I do? I shouldn't have sent in an email. Obviously, you don't sit in an email. Every email you have with this group, it has all these, like, government, um, you know, stamps all over the email because, you know, it goes, through, it goes through DOD servers and all this stuff. But I had no other way to get it to them, so I did. So I just sat there, and I didn't hear anything for a couple of weeks. I was like, okay, that relationship's done. I fried that thing. I went in there talking about, you know, I tell people it's like walking into somebody – during World War II and say, hey, about that nuclear bomb you're building in secret, you know, I want to talk to you about that. That's, that's basically what I did. Um, well, two weeks later, I get this email and it says, I want you to be next to the Pentagon at this date and this time. You're going to be meeting somebody from the CIA, basically. It's, it said it in a different way, but I can't say what it said. And so I, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, it's, it's working. Sorry about the OMGs in there, but I, I think I think it's interesting. I'm going to pause it right there just for a second because we got a little bit more that he's going to talk about because he's not done yet. He's this is this is the backstory that he shouldn't have told, and what really got him in a lot of trouble after the WikiLeaks thing because he uh, he, he kind of revealed a little too much about what was going on behind there. And I think he severed those connections after this. Um, that's that's more of the story further on. But um, I want you to notice that he said he wanted advisors. He told this guy that he wants advisors. Who was this guy? Well, we're going to find out who this guy is, and we're going to give some legitimacy to what's going on here because uh, I got some evidence behind you that will just blow your socks off. And then we're going to get into his, his movie. Uh, before we get into the next uh, semi-long clip, uh, anybody have any comments? You don't have to say anything, but if you have any comments, uh, speak up. Okay. We'll uh, run... Yeah. <laughs> You want to you say something else? <laughs> I just want to say I'm invested. 
and I want to hear more. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Let us, I, all right. I, I, I loved uh, <laughs> I loved his little intro door to door and giving us a little walkthrough. It felt like we were getting deeper and deeper into Willy Wonka's chocolate factory or something <laughs> like the way yeah. he was making. I wonder. It I, exciting. He's, I went through a door and then and then another I think door. Was, it's like wow. I was thinking about. It. I think he may have been describing a, a skiff, which uh, we've been hearing more about right. in uh, Congress. They're trying to get these are uh, what is the abbreviation? Don't have it off the top of my head. A sensitive compart uh, sensitive compartmented information facility. Hmm. Uh, that kind of lines yeah. up with what he was saying with the white noise being played, and they're like waiting in these kind of boardrooms. This is essentially what it is. It's a bunch of these uh rooms that are soundproofed out and mm -hmm. blocked from waves so serious business i mean obviously you we heard with congress they were having a hard time getting one to talk about the ufo stuff but it seems like that is what tom DeLong is describing and he managed to get one just fine right right he went on another podcast after this a radio show and he they asked him a bunch of questions about this interview he couldn't he said i can't say anything else about it i'm not allowed to say anything about it. so i think he got in in, in hot water after doing this one with, with uh with coast to coast, but we're gonna we're gonna let it go another. So here here's a here's the rest of it, or a little bit more, and then we'll talk about it. So I get on a plane and I fly out to D.C. Uh, and th this is where it gets pretty sketchy, but it, it was insane. So I I, uh, I go to my meeting. I had to go to a very specific location that was within a rock's throw of the Pentagon, and I go to the back of a room at a certain location, and there's two guys in suits waiting at a table for me. So I go and I sit down at the table, and uh, the person I was talking to is one of the persons, and he goes, I think this would be a good time for you to tell this person what you told me. And, uh, and I'm sitting there kind of in my mind, I'm going, well, what do I say? Do I tell him everything I told you? Or some of the things, am I allowed to tell him that I told you these things? Or I had no idea what to say, so I said, okay, I'll just go for it. So I went through the exact same pitch. At the, so I talked for about 20-some minutes because they were just eyeballing me like hawks, you know. So I don't, I, at this point, I, I just don't know. I've never been in these situations before, so I didn't know if I was saying the wrong thing or not, but I was just trying to be very respectful, and I went through with it. And I finished my speech, and the person is just staring at me. I mean, these squinting eyes, you know, the beard, the suit. I mean, looks exactly straight out of a movie, an espionage movie. Uh, takes a breath and goes, things like this don't happen at the White House. They don't happen at the Hill. They happen in places like this, at tables like this, where a few men get together and decide to push the ball down the field. And then the meeting was done. I mean, done, like a movie done. Uh, so the very next day, I got sent over to NASA. And I'm, I'm, I'm at the highest levels at NASA, I, and I, I decided to do the same thing where I ask everyone to leave. So uh, I, this one person, uh, I did the pitch one more time. And they said, you need to meet somebody. So that person flies out to San Diego. I go to another meeting. We get on a, a conference call. And this person is a very important um, in the military. can't say which branch, but the highest level of ranks, but then after they left that particular branch of the military, they did something very, very important for a, another agency. And that person says, come fly and meet me up here in San Francisco. So I, within the next 48 hours, so I got on a plane and I go there. And now I'm sitting on a, a NASA Ames. Um, NASA has three, three divisions. There's Ames Research, JPL, and then just NASA, the traditional NASA that everyone knows. I'm at Ames Research Center, and I go through my whole pitch again, and this person um, stops me and goes, uh, I just want you to know I'm a skeptic on this stuff. And I said, I understand that, sir, but I, I knew you would say that, but let me just continue and tell you what I'm trying to do. 20 minutes later, I just want you to know I'm just, I'm a skeptic. And I go, I know, I know you are. You already said that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, I, and I keep talking. And by the time I got to, to kind of concluding what this project would be, he just staring at me. And then he takes a deep breath and says, introduce him to the general. And then I was like, well, who's that? And they're both just staring at me because there was this guy that was right next to him, uh, a very serious guy. And, uh, I all of a sudden on my email two hours later I'm talking to somebody 
that has changed the entire course of this whole project. So I get on the phone with that person that same evening, and I go through the same situation. So I'm starting to t- walk through what I'm trying to do and how, I'm, how I plan to do it. And this person goes, I want you to know I'm a skeptic on this stuff. And I go, sir, I knew you would say that, uh, but let me explain a little bit more. So I walk through it again, and then the, the person goes, I, uh, I just got to say it. I'm a skeptic. You know, it was, it was, it was verbatim. What they I all do it, right? They, they all, they they all, all do it. it. They all do it. But on the third time, he goes, I swore an oath to my country. And I said, sir, I know you did. And I'm not asking for you to give me classified information. I don't deserve it. But I think if you understand what I'm about to do with this project, you may think it deserves your attention. And then he goes, I'm afraid what you might find is a bunch of men in suits standing around an elephant. And I said, I'm, I, I'm, I was afraid you were going to say that, but can you help me? And he says, fly out and meet me. And that's where, that's, that's... That's where things this, get interesting. This is where things get interesting. So I'm going to reveal who this actual general was because we've got uh, WikiLeaks articles and emails from the Podesta files that actually show this. What's interesting about the Podesta files is that they were deleted from WikiLeaks' server. They're still gone. I mentioned this a few episodes ago. They just vanished. Just gone. I mean, I've gone through them uh, a couple of years ago. And I was like, wow, I found this. Wow, I found this. Didn't save anything. But you can still go back if you know the URLs, which I have several of them. And I, I can go into the archive.org, has the Wayback Machine, if you know what I'm talking about. And you can, you can get these emails still because they're still archived in the Wayback Machine. But they are gone from WikiLeaks. I thought WikiLeaks was like this special server that the government couldn't touch. I don't know how they disappeared. What in the world? So I... I, I that made me question everything. It's like, okay, what is this being leaked as a, 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 a purposeful? Because obviously the government's going to be working with with the Blink One Eighty Two guy, Tom DeLong, here now. So, what's really going on? So, part of this show is trying to understand this from a Christian perspective. The other step part is taking the history and going, okay, let's reanalyze it from the lens of the Bible because this is this is uh, important stuff, and we've already. As uh, as Christians, we know what is our authority. That's the biblical scriptures. So how does this tie in? Well, we've we figured that out. This sh- this uh, and it's so funny because so many people, so many podcasts talk about this topic, and they're like, "We don't know. Let's ask a bunch of questions and then not give you the answers." Isn't that weird? Someone appeared and they disappeared. I, I hate that show. <laughs> I I don't like not knowing what's going on here. But we know what's going on here. It's all laid out, and it's happening right now. And uh, I want to plug, if you haven't seen it, two years ago we did a, uh, a documentary called Starfall. Go to starfallmovie.com and watch it because it gives you an update on what's actually happening here. Um, so we're not done with Tom's story yet. I said I cut this into thirds, so we got one more long segment, and we're going to con- uh, conclude with that so you can kind of get wrapped up in the history of where he came from and what's going on with this whole thing. But I thought I'd stop it here and kind of uh, give a breather for you guys. If you guys thought of anything that you want to talk about, if not, that's fine too. We can jump right into it. How many in the chat, in the live stream, uh, give, me a, uh, give me a tally. Just say uh, yay or nay if you enjoy these longer clips and want to know uh, what's going on here. We're not getting striked, so that's pretty good. Um, Matthew, uh, Wendy, Travis, do you have any any comments on this? It's okay if you don't. That's totally fine. I I think it's a lot more of just seeing him continuing to build his credibility because it's like once I got to this guy, then I got to the next level guy, then I got <laughs> to the next level guy, right? Because that because now surely he's closer to the truth because he's at a new you know three letter <laughs> agency or whatever with the guy with the suit you know behind a big table and the table is bigger you know it's just he's just building towards something that he clearly wants to reveal clearly wants you to believe because he he believes if he builds it and builds it and builds it and he and he tells you just how uh the people that are even talking to him are intimidated by it right mm-hmm. it, it, this is something that's going to make you question everything right mm-hmm. it's it's like uh the, the movie trailer likes to say you know forget everything you thought you knew <laughs> you know like, like it's just this build up 
Uh, and then eventually he's going to go kablamo and be like, oh, did I fool you? You know, did, did, did you buy it? You know, I, it, that's that's where he's headed. <laughs> what do you guys what, what do you guys think, uh, Wendy or, or Matthew? When I had several comments that were running through my head for one, you said that he gets in trouble. Right. So eventually he's he's given the stop sign. When does that happen? Do you know? Do you have any information about that? I have the podcast. It's a radio podcast that where he talks about it. And um, uh, I'll have to bring that out because this show was so long. So long I didn't want to waste my okay. guest's time and, and bring too much into that. But maybe we'll do a part two and I'll, I'll show you where he's kind of like, uh, I can't talk about that anymore. And uh, it's, it's like okay. so obvious because it's right after this. And then he's not able to talk about this stuff anymore. What's going on? And after that, he yeah. also talks about how he's lost connections with his his uh, email contacts with uh, these major generals that we'll talk about in a second, which I'm fascinated because we actually have um, some military that are in the Discord and watches this show. I'm curious if if you guys know who this guy is. In fact, I think we even have someone that works at the uh, some of the uh, uh, big bases that work on these things. So... Um, He's, he's chatted with me a little bit, and I'm curious if he knows who some of these major generals are, too. Wink, wink. Talk to me. Anyway. Well, else? Oh, so the interesting thing is he says that um, he wanted to use this project because the, the youth of our nation has lost confidence in the government, right? Mm -hmm. And I've read Secret Machines. Uh, part one and two, and then the, the nonfiction that follows the first book I've read, so not the second one. But I will tell you that it certainly does not give me any confidence in my government. <laughs> like the overarching theme is that the government lies to everybody. Wow. That's literally the point of it. I mean, if you look at all of the um, different characters that are involved in the, in the book, what you see over and over and over is that they're all trying to figure out what's going on and nobody knows. The guy that's in the military who, um, he's the character that's a pilot. He actually gets on like the, the, he starts flying a UFO and then when that one's shot down, he gets into the UFO that the government hasn't figured out how it works yet. And he just starts tampering with it and flies it telepathically. Well, this guy throughout the entire book is just so angry at the fact that nobody will tell him what's going on. And he's like, you're getting me in danger. You're getting everybody else in danger. Nobody would be in these situations if you just told us what we needed to know ahead of time. And like, these are supposed to be the parts that are true. The, the book says that all of the scenarios, all of the, um, the plot lines are true. It's just the glue that holds the characters together. It says that's yeah. what's false. So apparently the stories are supposed to be true but how the characters know each other in the book would be false. So they basically weaved the stories together to make it a coherent, you know, book. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there, there's no, um, I don't know. I, I wonder if that's why he got in trouble because what he was supposed to do didn't really happen. Fascinating. Well, you're, you're, you're supposed to trust the government more because now they're admitting that they've lied to you. You know, that's a, <laughs> yeah. they're telling the truth. I let you know that they've lied to you a lot. You know, now trust is yeah, right. <laughs> the truth is, we're always going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, closer already. This uh, someone said in the chat here. I want to. I want to uh, acknowledge the chat real quick. The live chat it says, "I still don't see anything new with Tom DeLonge. Is this guy even active at all?" Yeah, he just produced a movie, and he's the writer, director, and and producer of this uh, giant movie that just came out called Monsters in California or Monsters of California, one of the two, that we're going to go over at the end of this episode very soon. We're just building up to it because we got to bring everyone up to speed on who this guy is and what he's doing and how legitimate it is that he's what he's saying is absolutely true. We have proof of that coming right up here. But first, let's conclude his story. Unless, Matthew, I didn't let you talk, unless you have anything to say. Um, no. And uh, we'll, we'll run and see exactly what he's, uh, what he's uh, finishing with. Here we go. When I when I got connected to the general, that was a big big breakthrough. And um, before I talk a little bit more about how I got, you know, I got more trust from these guys. Um, what happened was is I was up at NASA Ames. You know, I got connected to a very specific person, and that person had me fly out and meet them. So this is where it gets really interesting. Uh, 
so I go out to a certain city, and I land at the airport, and I walk through security, and I meet this person. Um, the person takes me uh, to a restaurant that's right past security, and I go to the back of the the back of the restaurant. There's nobody in that area, and we sit at a booth for two hours. And while we're sitting there, he leans across the table, and this is the first, the first, very first words that were said to me. It was the Cold War, and every single day we lived under the threat of nuclear war. Every single day we believed and really thought in the deepest part of our souls that nuclear war could happen at any given moment. And then he stops and he goes, and somewhere in those years, and he looked me in the eye, he goes, we found a life form. And everything that we did and every decision that we made with that life form was because of the consciousness at that time. And I said, sir, you know, when taking into account things that this life form has done, for example, turning our nuclear weapons on and readying them for launch. And then he interrupts me, puts a finger in my face and says, there are heroes in Russia, heroes. And under grave risk to himself and to his country, they did not fire back. And at that moment, I realized I was, it already started. This, this new game I was in uh, of, of working with people in like a dance of words and information was already coming. He, I mean, there, there was, it was no, uh, <laughs> there was no like small talk. Like we didn't just sit down and just say, hey, let's let's have a beer and let's like get to know each other. Um, so let's jump back to that. Let, let's jump back to that conversation. It was the to, Cold War. I mean, he's right. given you sort of the the setting for how the cover up or what we'd call the cover up began. Yeah, so this is very important for people to remember. And this is, this, is, this is where I'm so excited to start chopping down all these pathetic conspiracies that I was involved in as well, you know. It, it was the Cold War. We really, he's saying that every day they, they really thought about the annihilation of all mankind with these, you know, weapons that were hundreds or thousands of times bigger than what we dropped on Japan, and we had 20,000 each of those things. And all of a sudden, something falls on, the, on their laps that's just extraordinary, you know. But even, even further than that, if you really hear what I'm saying about the nuclear weapons, the UFOs were turning our weapons on and, and just so Russia could pick up that we're firing our missiles and fire theirs first. It was a big chess game. So these guys went into complete secrecy to start coming up with a defense system against this phenomenon. Now, you know, I, I try to tell people some, some analogies on this. Imagine if someone from the CIA came to your house and sat on your couch and says, hey, I want to tell you about that nuclear weapon uh, that they tried to smuggle in through Canada uh, two months ago. And I also want to tell you about this you know, virus that uh, almost got released in Los Angeles. And I want to, you know, all these, cra- I, they're not going to do that. Because they're going to be busy trying to figure out how to find the people that did it or, or, to, or to seal off the borders or to come up with a game plan to get better defensive measures across our, you know, our country, and whatever they're doing. They, that's how this is. That's how big this issue is. They're not worried about if you and I totally understand because they're too busy trying to understand it and come up with a way to defend against it. And, um, and at the same time, they really want people to understand this, to know these things, but they don't want it to mess up their efforts. Uh, the, 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 more, the more that I started to find out, I, I thought it was a pretty heroic tale that these were really good men and women. Do you know that in that first conversation that I had with that general, uh, during the two hours, I mean, I didn't even leave the airport. I was in this back booth, and I would get, go to security, get on a plane, go right back home. It was it was crazy meeting, but uh, during that he must have brought up what was best for the rep- quote best for the republic best for the free republic he brought that up probably eight different times it's very 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 important to these men what is best for the f- for for the united states as a free country free thinking man and the republic of, that we built they're not these they're not these crazies running around trying to war they're not warmongers you know um, very smart this person has multiple PhDs, and I, I wish I could tell you 
what who he is and what he, he there was nobody above him there's nobody maybe maybe a couple but it, it, when you look at the divisions of how the department of defense works and this specific division um it, it it's it's just extraordinary that I have this contact. So I started using that as much as I could. So I said, so taking it from that point, we talked for two hours and I said, sir, I need an advisory committee. And we walked through what I need and, and why. And so he went out and got the advisors for me. Okay. So now we got an advisory committee coming up here. So this is how, this is where it gets really fascinating. Cause, uh, but before we talk about the advisory committee and how that links to Podesta's email hack, um, and how that reveals who this general guy actually is and how we know this whole thing is legitimate. I mean, this whole thing ties together. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about what he said. Because before I show you absolute evidence, you're going to have to tell me, uh, you're going to have to uh, believe me for a second that this, what I'm saying and what I believe is absolutely, uh, that this guy's at least telling his side of the story from what happened and it's not just some lie that's made up. He's telling you what is going on in his life. So what's happened here? Let's take this all as, as legitimate for a second. These things come in out of nowhere during the end of the world wars, and uh, they start messing around with nuclear weapons, turning things off, turning things on. <clears throat> he only says one thing about turning things on, uh, off. What do you see on? I forget which one. But there's on the other side of the world, they are turning them off or on the other the other way. So this isn't like some benevolent being that's trying to make sure that these things are are uh, just uh, turned off so that they don't get shot out. No, th this is a this is a, hey we're playing games here. This is a spiritual phenomenon that is a trickster that's playing games and it's playing games with some of the most dangerous technology we have because it's allowed to. And so the government. Let's take what his story has face value. His government went into secrecy and said, okay, okay, okay. Everyone, put out a cover story. We're going to figure this out before it gets out of hand because the people will go bonkers if they found out that our, our nuclear weapons are going off by themselves. And, uh, I mean, we would have absolutely haywire. So they went out and tried to figure out how they could stop spiritualism from happening. I mean, whoa. Whoa. I mean, take that for a uh, sit back and, and chew on that for a second. Um, the government has been having trouble with spiritualism at, for a long time, but more so very physically. And we're going to get into that a little bit more here in a second. But um, I actually do have another clip before I, I prove it, but I don't remember why I included it. So it's a it's a mystery to me. I think it was one I was going to put into the uh, the the uh, uh, Patreon. So I might watch a minute of it, and then we'll we'll shoot it over to Patreon. But uh, would you have guys have any comments on that before I uh, move on to proving what I'm I'm seeing here? Painting the United States government in this really positive light that they're trying to preserve the republic, and you know they're just really hustling for the safety and the good of all of the citizens. It, it's kind of strange when you contrast it with his little story about, yeah, those decisions aren't made in Congress or in the White House. They're made in little <laughs> tables like this. And we decide what happens. And, hmm. and that's what we're yeah. actually seeing uh, with the congressional hearings now. They're, and I mean, maybe some of them are actually outraged about this. Maybe some of them are acting like they're outraged. But that seems to be the central theme. The whole point of this go ahead with uh, the UAP is not necessarily the phenomenon itself. It's there are uh, secret like uh, secret access projects and the military industrial complex has become way too uh, overbearing and it can do whatever it wants to do. So now we have to have other portions of the government. You know, it's essentially it's like the body is fighting itself, it's, you know. The, the right arm is punching the gut, the left arm is punching the face, and it's just a, it's a total uh, clown show right now. But it, it's it's funny how <laughs> Tom goes, you know, back and forth between these two extremes. It just uh, seems a little froward to me. It seems a little double-minded, yeah. confused man in his ways. And I, I want to add to that before I, I, I pass it down to you guys. Um, what you're saying is 100% true because we have uh, – Larry Kirkpatrick, right? The guy who heads up Arrow, I think it is, Arrow or, or A-Tip. Sean. Oh, 
Sean, Sean Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick. Yeah, that guy. And thank you for uh, checking me, fact checking me. So what? And he just came out. I have a, a news article I wanted to present tonight, but it just didn't fit. <clears throat> Fits perfect here, where he said that. Um, yeah. So everything that David Grutch said, uh, I've been looking into it, and there is some truth to what he's saying. This is the guy that's getting booted from the government for not looking into some of the stuff that uh, Grutch had uh, originally presented to him. And now he's saying that, yeah, I think it's actually probably true, uh, uh, some of the stuff he's saying. And some of the stuff he's saying is pretty bizarre. If you haven't already looked into David Grutch and everything like that, if you have, great. If you haven't, you have to watch further episodes back where we talk about David Grutch because uh, to find out exactly what's going on with that. Uh, what about you guys? Travis, uh, Wendy, what do you think about this last clip before I move on? I think it's really fascinating when you look at some of the previous episodes here on Strange Normal and you take a look at what the New Age is saying about these aliens that they channel all the time. Because what are they saying? They're here for our good mm -hmm. and they have a message for us, which is what? We're going to destroy the world without their help. We need them. They're, you know, our cosmic saviors or however they word it. And here, Tom DeLonge is saying, wait, the heroes are actually in Russia because of what these beings are doing. They're trying to cause this war, but wait, like, how does that fit? We're hearing separate stories here. So are they good? Are they not? You know, it's like the aliens need to get their story straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, what Jesus said was, you know, um, Oh, what was that verse? He says that we're, um, oh, it came to me and it left. It's on the tip of my tongue where, where he says that um, mm, mm, Satan's world is basically uh, non, it's not coherent. It's not sticking together. Um, mm. Someone's going to, someone's going to know what I'm talking about here in the chat, but man, I, that's just, just totally left me. Um, uh, I'm going to think of it in a second, but um they're deceivers, though, you know, so I feel like they're just going to meddle and do whatever they can to confuse people. I feel like once somebody gets kind of like a hang on, hey, this is what's going on. They're like, not quite. Let's mix it up a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So kind of fits. Very good. Travis, any thoughts before I move on? Man, Tom DeLonge has just battled through all of the opposition and he finally gets to the restaurant at the quiet table in the back and he's finally <laughs> found his source of truth. I mean, what this this is the hero's journey, Tom DeLonge, as he searches for truth. It's so interesting to me because you, you get to the back table, the guy in the restaurant, and he's like, let me level with you, Tom. Here's the lowdown. I'm going to tell you all the things you've been seeking at every stop prior. You know, it's like, it's it's great you know it's 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 very it's it's certainly what he's trying to build for you he's trying to give you this picture that he's getting closer and closer to something that is valuable and uh man this guy cannot wait for you to believe what he believes about it as well and uh, right. i'm excited about the next clip yeah yeah it, right on. it would be funny if uh they were all just pulling a big prank on him they were just like, yeah, yeah just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the lead Behind singer of Blink-182, yeah. he wants to talk about aliens. Really? <laughs> That's kind of a slow week. Let's, let's do the restaurant routine. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, the restaurant oh, yeah. routine, for sure. They got a great <laughs> Reuben. All right, I'm down. <laughs> let's take, yeah. him, take him to San Francisco, Dang. Florida, take him to NASA, take him around. Let's show them show them what it was. Yeah, some of the some of the people in the chat they found the verse that I was talking about. It was um, kingdom divided against itself shall not shall not stand, and uh, he talks about how Satan's kingdom is is divided against itself. I mean, there's it, it if when you are a uh, when your main principle is do what thy wilt, um, everyone has their own opinion, and so you can't stand. I mean, that's why you need a coherent law, a system that puts everything a law of love that makes everyone. Uh, uh, not makes everyone, but uh, guides everyone's principles because they want to, and they said this is the best way to happen. So, so I think that's that's important. Let's listen to this clip. I might have to pause it here because I don't know if this is the one I wanted to uh, present tonight. I think it just got randomly put in the wrong spot. But anyways, here we go. Um, what got really, what was really interesting about this is that I started getting advisors that were in different areas. You know, people that deal with space people that deal with intelligence, people that deal with bio-warfare, um, stuff that you wouldn't necessarily think I should need 
but I got them, you know. Uh, and and now I had the ability to start pulling these people together, and I had this one really interesting contact out in Washington D.C. that was connected to the to to the highest levels of government. That's how I can say it. And so I was able to pull off a coup in in regards to what anybody in this field has ever been able to pull off, which was a conversation with not only my advisors, um, the most important group of the advisors, and somebody representing basically the highest levels of the land and talking about how do we do something to help the youth understand that this is a reality, but that th- they're doing really good work and and they could use the empowerment they could use these the 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 citizens of the United States and the world understanding why it's been kept secret and that they they're not doing it out of uh, malicious reasons they're doing it because it's an ongoing task it's an ongoing issue and they don't fully understand it yet but they're trying their hardest and spending lots of money and have the brightest minds that they can find and they're building things and they're and they're having breakthroughs that um I think frankly we would all be in- incredibly proud of as a nation of what they've done I don't uh, Tom I don't think you know what a coup d'etat is but um <laughs> I I'll, I'll just uh, let, let let you take it as it is forget Forget secret machines. We have a secret president, and his name is Tom DeLong. <laughs> <laughs> he led okay. a successful coup. And <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think it's fascinating. So this is this this next. Uh, I can't see this very well because my screen is too too small. But I'm going to show you this real quick. This is uh, AP um, news article, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> I like that sound effect. That's what it makes it sound yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to maximize this so I can read it. If you, I can't read it, I'm going to have um, Matthew read it because I think you can see it better than me. But it says, Washington, okay. new evidence appears to show that hackers earlier this year stole more than 50,000 emails from Hillary Clinton's campaign. Now, this is back in 2016. Uh, uh, an audacious electronic attack blamed on Russia's government that and one that has resulted in embarrassing political disclosures about Democrat uh, in the final weeks before the U.S. presidential elections. The hackers sent John Podesta an official-looking email. This is fascinating to me because uh, I'm an IT uh, nerd, and uh, I want to know exactly how they hacked into it. But the long and the short of it is that they hacked into a uh, dude's <laughs> password, and they collected all his emails. And so they basically sent this thing said, hey, you got to change your password. I'm going to make it short for you guys. And uh, you got to you, – and it made it look like a legitimate email. It came from the Ukraine uh, area, and uh, they traced it back. And then they was sent to their, their IT guys on the weekend when they had very little security. And um, – our, our staff members, and one of the staff members, apparently he was the new guy, I guess, because he sent it back and said, yeah, this is legit, you should change your password. Well, Podesta goes in there and clicks it and puts his password into this random website, and, <laughs> and voila, you have all his passwords, all, all his emails that were collected. And some of those emails, and this is important because some of those emails were like this one right here. Look at this email. This is from t.delong at me.com and to john.podesta at gmail.com. Now, where am I getting this from? Well, this is actually from the WikiLeaks article. This is the, 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 the stuff that came out. Um, and what does the subject say? General McClasland. General McCasland. McClas- McClasland? Am I saying that right? I it's love the way you McCaslin. said it. McCasland. McCasland. <laughs> <laughs> the body of the email says he mentioned he's a skeptic. He's not. Okay, so who is he talking about here? He just talked about a bunch of skeptics, right? Uh, and yeah. and uh, I've been working with him for four months. I just got done giving him a four-hour presentation on the entire project a few weeks ago. Trust me. The advice has already been happening. Oh, man, I can barely see that. Am I saying that right? Been happening on how to do all this. He just has to say uh, that out loud, but not. Uh, but he is not is very very aware. He as he was in charge of all of the stuff. 
<laughs> when Jay Roswell, Brad. yeah, I do. You read the rest of it. Yeah, I can barely see it. Weird, yeah. When Roswell crashed, they shipped it to the laboratory at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. General McCasland was in charge of that exact laboratory up to a couple years ago. He not only knows what I'm trying to achieve, he helped assemble my advisory team. He's a very important man. Best, Tom DeLong. Tom DeLong, founder, Tom at stars to the stars com. <laughs> so Tom, Tom is just telling John Podesta, who's who's uh, very interested in UFOs, to be honest. He's been in, 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 uh, fascinated by this for a long time. But I don't think it was probably right for Tom just to tell uh, what he can't tell who this guy is to, uh, to John Podesta, even if he is working with Clint, Hillary Clinton. Um, well, John Podesta is a, uh, he's a slimy character. Yeah. He's a slimy, slimy man. And, um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he belongs to a number of secret societies and if they haven't bumped into each other a couple of times in real life. So there's a, a comfortable, uh, aspect going back and forth. Mm -hmm. And it's weird too, that John Podesta is the one being talked to about UAP when, he hasn't publicly i don't think there's anything about him going on the record saying anything about uap ufo non-human intelligence mm -hmm. so it's like what, what's going on behind the scenes are they all just kind of discussing this thing and a couple mm -hmm. of them are like i'm the public face so i'll go up and i'll say the crazy stuff that we talk about in private but you know when we're emailing each other we're all just kind of in on this grand mm -hmm. it's a conspiracy i'm by its definition this right. is conspiracy people if you wanted to know what it looks like it's it was in the podesta emails which by the way covers a lot more than just uap oh. stuff yeah it's, there's there's yeah, yeah. and 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 this and all the emails that were in here that disappeared again if you go to this email uh this this link i should just bring it up uh, it just says, oh, we're rebuilding this page. Yeah, you've been rebuilding for a year, and I don't know what happened to this thing, but it's gone. And um, so so this is – so when I was working on Starfall, which is the, the documentary that you guys, uh, if you haven't seen, go watch, starfallmovie.com. This is one clip from there that I, I wanted to show you. They, these are two guys that were inside that – that email hack that John that uh, Tom DeLong was actually working with, the Major General uh, Michael Carey and uh, General Neil William McCasland. So McCasland, yeah. And so I think uh, I, I even I was like, okay, do these guys are these on on YouTube? Do they talk about any of this stuff? No, no, nothing. I mean, th th there's some random speeches by the guy. Uh, Major General uh, Michael Carey up there, but uh, McCaslin is, is nowhere to be seen. Uh, works in the Air Force Research Laboratory at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. We've heard of that Air Force Base before. And this guy is a special assistant <clears throat> uh, to the Commander uh, Peterson's uh, Air Force Base Space Command. Space Command, interesting. And that was... Uh, uh, so that's, that's a little bit fascinating to me. But... Um, that I, I wish I could show you all the emails, but it's hard to find them now because they're so missing, and I don't have all the links anymore. But I was able to to d at least dig that one up for this episode because it was important to prove that you know th Tom DeLonge just not making up stories here. He was actually in the government talking about this uh, strange spiritual phenomenon to other government and employees, and that's why we're having all this stuff coming out in in uh in congress right now because they are working behind the scenes to to push this thing forward and the reason why we talk about this on this channel is because it's going to become a much bigger deal here in the future as former uh former um uh occultists that became christians have come out and said they it would so um I think with that, we're actually going to go into the movie clips now. But do you have any, any thoughts on that before we do? Yeah. Um, one thing that really stood out when Tom was talking in that final clip before you went to the email was he pointed out, and I love it when people uh, talk about and kids and, and young people and use the word the youths. Um, but, <laughs> but he essentially talked about the, this focus on the youth. 
because it's like it's as if other people are from different time from a different indoctrination period of what reality is and it's like to get people to really buy in and sink their teeth into this they want to capture the hearts and minds of the youth like like how can we really get the youth wow. on our side with this like that's wow. it's such such a big focus of his and and we've mentioned disney it's, it's such a big focus today for uh, and and so parents and like people who work around young people and young people mm -hmm. watching it's like that that the devil wants you to think in a certain direction you know, Tom DeLonge would very much love for you to agree with him about reality and whatever he wants to further present to you. And uh, and, and it just perks up my ears and it made me feel a little like sad inside that that's yeah. really the attack demographic, it seems like, for him. Yeah. Train up a child, I guess the Bible says, right? Fascinating. Fascinating. With that, I think it's important to uh, jump into this next segment. This next segment is the do is the uh, the movie he made, and although it is a B movie, I don't think it. I don't even know if it went into theater. Uh, it's it's still better than anything I've ever made, and I'm a little jealous if I made something like this, but not with the same message. But uh, he. So I'm, what I'm what I'm saying is, it's not any good, but it's pretty good. <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm advocating. Don't go see it. It's pretty crass, but check this clip out right here. Um, what do you see in this clip? At this is the first few seconds of the movie. Oh look! What does that say? Okay, in the nice aerial font or whatever it is, standard font that's there, to the stars, to the stars. So this is his company that he's talked about from the very beginning. And uh, in that uh, first clip that I this showed him. This is his Disney. Yeah, this is his Disney. Right. This is yeah. what he's using, as he said, to push a message out that's going to be talked about for generations that's going to change the world. And uh, this is what he's using. He so he's now first made Secret Machine books, which we did a whole episode on those Secret Machine books, maybe two. I forget with Wendy, right? Right. And um, and uh, now he's talking about it inside this, and it's blatant where the propaganda begins and ends. It, it, it's it's not it's it's just blatant. So I'm gonna let you guys. Uh, see some different clips from here and uh, get an idea of what's actually going on and then we'll conclude but um, we got a few clips to go over. You ready for this? Here we go. What's happening here? No idea. It's over here! So this is the intro scene for the main characters of the movie. Bad they uh, started something that couldn't be stopped. Three best friends about to find out something we thought impossible. Answers. So three best friends start uh, a a trip to this uh, haunted house so they can get a picture of the spiritualism in it. It doesn't even start out with UFOs. This whole thing starts out with <laughs> demonic activity, and yeah. and how they want to try to uh, find it and and to 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 grasp at something they believe. That's what's going on right here, and I find it fascinating that they start with this. Um, do you have any comments? Any anything that you want to say before I go into the next clip? I do. I do. Yeah, yeah. Go for it, Wendy. So um, before this episode, I had no idea he even made a movie, and I did watch the trailer, and I had to agree completely with Travis. Like, it's well made. It's not, you know, a, a poor production quality, but it wasn't ever put out in the theaters. However, 
it definitely has all the aspects to pull in like the teens of today or even younger than that. I don't know what kids are watching, you know, when their parents aren't around, but this just this brainwashing ability that movies have, you know, again, when you watch a show, it literally fronts, it, it shuts off the frontal lobe of your brain, which allows you to make rational choices. So you're not thinking logically when you watch these things, it's allowing movies to just subliminally subliminally put messages in your head and yeah what's the first message um the stuff's demonic yeah, <laughs> what? yeah. but it's, yeah. A, it's, it's also weird using me. humor it's yeah it's yeah like soften it up it's just say, weird to me they're like why yeah, wouldn't they hide that, that? yeah yeah because it's yeah. like Go you ahead. could do Are that you gonna scene with a totally oh sorry didn't mean to step on any toes travis would you like to no, no, I'm going to let you go, and then I'll go. Thank you. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's funny, because you can play that scene out with a totally different tone, uh, and, and it has been played out that way, because you know, it's like a paranormal investigation type of a thing, but because the guy is like, oh, oh, and like getting stripped down to his boxers, and another guy's getting blasted out of the room, it's just, it becomes like a Scooby-Doo type of a thing. You're not, uh, you know, you're, you're not thinking of it being like, wow, there's a there's a, a demonic spirit who just threw a man through a window and is like physically <laughs> tormenting another man. And they're scrambling to get footage of it. It's just, it totally removes you from that. It's like, it's like you said, Wendy, it's disarming and it softens mm -hmm. you up to it. And it's like, it does sucker you. in. I think that humor is very interesting thing because I do think that God uh, intends for us to find humor in things and to enjoy laughing and making each other laugh. But the devil understands us on that level and knows that, you know, if I can get them in, if I can get them laughing, get them comfortable, I can just dial it up. And sometimes he's like, I don't even need to come out subtly. I can come out swinging really hard and heavy. I mean, mm -hmm. as long as they're entertained by what I'm doing, they're going to keep watching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 No, humor definitely disarms you to, to receive something that isn't necessarily what the humor is about, right? It's a, uh, you're, you, you laugh, laugh, ha ha. And then you're seeing something, you're beholding something, you're receiving something more intentional and, and maybe more, more nefarious. But I, I actually have seen the trailer to this as well. Uh, Brad, are you going to show the trailer? I don't have the trailer in here. We can do that, but I, okay. I kind of want to well, bring up. Well, the... I can just break down just a yeah. couple do aspects it. of that trailer. It begins with drug use. Then it goes into trying to contact the dead. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into, you know, some realm of talking about aliens and the spiritual realms. And like, it's, it, it, it's just connecting all of this. And clearly it's about aliens. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's fascinating how spiritual they hit you and they make it fun. Just like this trailer, they make it funny. They make it loose. They make it, Hey, these, these would be your friends from school type thing. Like these are just the, the people that the, the world today is kind of pushing as fun. And, you know, right. yeah, it's, it's definitely, it, you're like you said, it's, it's a well-made production. Right. Yeah. That's exactly what's going on here. And, and I, I think it's, it's not Disney. I mean, it's not like you have like billions of people working on it. Like, but it's it's good enough for a couple guys that I'm. You guys had a budget. I mean, wow. All um, right, okay, so let's go into something a little more serious. The message number two that's being uh, pushed on this um, is fascinating because uh, we're suddenly out of nowhere. We're still in the same act, I guess you could say, if it was a play. And uh, we're, we're talking about this, uh, this amazing thing that's happening. They're, they're going through and they're looking at uh, trying to find this paranormal activity in these houses. And then suddenly we go into prayer. Let's pray. This is the very next scene? Yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. And I'll pray with your brother and sister. You guys... I had the craziest night last night. I'm serious, you gotta hear this. It was unbelievable. You won't believe it, we saw a real ghost. I mean it, and I think I got it on camera. It was big, really big. It moved like an apparition. It almost killed Toe. Oh my God, Dallas, shut up and leave Mom alone. What? What am I doing? You're constantly trying to make her feel stupid for her beliefs, and it's super lame. No, I'm not. This stuff is gnarly. 
And if anyone saw what we saw last night, they'd feel pretty different about things. Dallas, I want you to stay away from this stuff. You've been chasing it for three years, ever since your dad's accident, and you know what? I I'm done hearing about it. Whatever your dad did with Jim and the program or whatever, it's over. It's dark, and I don't want you having anything to do with it. God! It's Why are you so on edge when you walk through the door? But you're out all night chasing invisible monsters with your friends, and then you come at us like we're the weird ones. Can we just stop and have a normal dinner for once? Invisible monsters? You believe a man in a toga and Birkenstocks created Jupiter? Come on. Most people on Earth believe in the Bible. So I guess we are the crazy ones, and you are the soul enlightened one. I guess so. Jesus Christ. Exactly. Trillions of galaxies discovered. And the creator of your universe is a handsome white dude that came to this planet only a few thousand years ago, mind you. 20 billion years after the plants were created and millions of years after life was already here, but no, no, that makes sense. Dallas, now you're being blasphemous. But Dad never would have thought science was crazy. Well, Dad is gone, isn't he? And he is not coming back. And I wish you would just accept that so we could all move on with our lives. Look, I love you. God loves you, and that's all anyone here needs. You don't even know what God is. God could be a sea of energy for all we know. I guess we still disagree on a lot of stuff. Wow, wow. That deserves some comment. Let's not pray again. Um, some of that needs to be commented on, some of that needs to be de uh, de decompiled. Uh, because that that was um, a fascinating clip that I didn't expect to to see in such a in such a oh you know these aliens have nothing to do with God style movie how how does this come out of nowhere well I have a little bit before we comment on it I have a little bit of an explanation of that Tom wrote this so he wrote it from his own experience because that's what you can pull from unless you're channeling dem demon spirits I assume maybe he did I mean he didn't but. Unfortunately, I didn't put these clips in here, and I meant to before uh, we went live today, so I'm going to have to read them off the screen. You can Google these, uh, these sentences so you can find where the exact uh, article is, but faith versus science. This is uh, um, from, from when he was interviewing about this uh, movie itself. One element that particularly struck me more for the amount of time that Monsters of California spends on it is the push-pull between belief in Christianity and the reliance on scientific fact. Given his fascination with alien life and interplanetary exploration, Tom DeLong clear, clearly falls on the science side of the debate, as does Dallas, the character who displays some Tom's, of Tom's best qualities. You can see where this is going. He's putting himself into the, into the script. Uh, but Tom and his co-screenwriter, Ian Miller, enjoy staging arguments between Dallas and his mother because of their, uh, their, because of their faith standing in opposition of her son's logical conclusions. Logical. As DeLong tells me, this comes from his own childhood experiences, just as I surmised, making Monsters of California that much more personal and that much more accessible. This is what Tom says. My mom is a Christian. I grew up in a Christian household, and my dad was not. And there was a lot of pain and fighting and broken home ingredients because of that. I learned a lot. I learned everything about Christianity just growing up, having to go to church every Sunday. But I also hated it. I felt it was weird. I didn't understand it because I knew that there were so many religions that are around a lot longer. And I also knew the universe was around so much longer before that. So none of it made sense to me. In 2003, while on a break from the recording, what would go on to be their self-titled album, Blink-182, traveled to the Middle East to play for some troops following the Iraq War. It was on that trip that DeLong came to a crucial understanding. He said, none of these people, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, over here give a flying flip about our uh, version of God. They have their own that has been around for even longer. And I'm, I was like, why do we even think what we know what we know? Once I started really digging into the UFO 
and learning about that, it opened the door to everything to do with the fabric of reality and consciousness, religion and secrecy, DNA and biology. There are all these branches of the tree. What you come to learn is that over time, science was about what's measurable and whatever tools we have at the time. This is Tom DeLong talking in case you're just tuning in. I'm not saying this. Anything else is covered paranormal or metaphysical. We just throw it into our religion. We go, we just go, we can't measure that because we haven't in, uh, invented a tool to measure that. So that's God, you know, that's, that's Catholicism. He said, that's the study of Islam. That's whatever you want it to say. But now we are learning through the quantum physics and through the tools we've made where it be CERN or whatever, uh, that what these things uh, really are in the bowels of, of uh, Yale or, or Harvard or Lawrence or Livermore. Now we know that all this stuff we've pawned off as religion is actually measurable. Now we are taking faith and spirituality and consciousness and religion and taking Newton's uh, physics and talking about Newton's physics. And, and now they're um, merging. Now it's all science. Now it's all reality. And so he goes in and talks about this stuff and, and, and he's clearly uh, making the assumptions that many people are going to make someday. They're going to say, well, all this stuff, because you haven't received, the Bible says, because they haven't received the love of, of, of truth, check me on that, uh, they, they will uh, believe a lie, right? And so this is the lie that's starting to be believed, that all, all this stuff that's happening right now is true religion, and it's being created by deceivers. That's the truth. And so how can you believe anything if it's created by deceivers? Any, any yeah. comments on that? I do. Um, he's saying because because they uh, love not the truth, that God gives them over to the deception. Ah. So it's like you, you take a little bit of the deception, and if that's what you're going to run with, God says, have it. If that's what you choose, just have it. Um, looking at this first bit of the movie, it's really angering to me. It's not surprising because uh, in his book, Peter Lavenda and Tom DeLong, they say that all religion is UFO religion. Meaning that it, it all comes together. It's all explaining the same thing. Um, it's the same New Age garb that says, you know, Jesus Christ is just one of the ascended masters, just one way to heaven. But really all religions point to heaven, mm. which as Christians we know is not anywhere near the truth. Um, it's just, it's angering because when you look through all of the uh, case files, like Joe Jordan has, what he would say to you is that, those who believe in ufology and the new age stuff they say yeah we we allow all religions we welcome all religions except christianity right because they're the ones that say no it can't be all these ways there's only one way mm -hmm. so we have to before we can lay the foundation of ufo is the right way we've got to knock out christianity and so clearly you know he's got an agenda a personal one because you know it's what his childhood looked like but um he's just trying to you know push christianity out of the way to try to reframe the groundwork of this new religion that's going to change the world uh a couple other thoughts just to throw out as a mom <laughs> it really bothered me that he says you know he's obsessed with something he's got this burning question and instead of addressing it she's like just let it go let it go get on with it as a parent that's a huge problem. If you're going to ignore what your children are into, what they're curious in, what they're burning, desire, like the questions in their head, you're not going to have a relationship with them. Of course, they're going to look elsewhere. And yeah, they're not going to accept your faith. They're not going to accept anything you have to share with them because you're being completely disrespectful to that child. I mean, he's, he's looks like he's almost an adult. She should have a little more respect for her, you know, growing son. The other thing is, um, it talks about the mom and the dad having completely different faiths, right? The mom goes to church, the dad doesn't. That just goes to show, like the Bible says not to be unequally yoked. And I don't think that's because God is, you know, rude or wants to disclude people of other faiths. I think it's because he knows the harm 
when you have a divided family, you're going to have children that are going to see that divide and they're going to say, oh, okay, so, you know, this religion that my mom's giving me, that might not be the way because dad doesn't believe it. Yeah. It's just this wow. huge, you know, doubt that rolls in. So it's no wonder that he feels this way and that he feels he has to push this. But <laughs> from this side of things and knowing that teenagers are going to flock to, to movies like this, they're going to side with that teenager in the movie and be like, yeah, you know, forget religion. It's just, mm -hmm. <laughs> it breaks my heart. I don't like seeing it. Yeah. It's a straw man is what it is because they just are propping up. Here's the Christian, you know, the mom is introduced with let's all, let us pray with one another. And you know, it, and like you said, from a parent point of view, yeah, when my kids, I know they're going to grow up and they're going to start asking questions. They're going to genuinely want to know these things because that's how God created us to be inquisitive and to look for answers. So as a parent, I mean, especially just think about what he said. He was like, yeah, you would never believe what we saw last night. And he's like reviewing the footage. It tried to kill so-and-so and blah, blah, blah. If, like my son was telling me that he was involved in it, I'd be like, uh, this is textbook demonic stuff son this is a perfect opportunity to share it with you what i believe and you know what i'm not gonna sit here and just preach at you off the top of my head let's break out the bible and let's see what the bible has to say about this let's look and see where demonic spirits have harmed people or uh have had them commit suicide or you know the list goes on and on it really it is a moment to to share uh your faith and maybe i mean unfortunately if this is based off of Tom's own upbringing, maybe that's kind of how his mother or father treated him when he had these kinds of questions. And that's there, a shame. That's where I was going. Because, yep. because it, it's let this be a, a warning to us that we need to be open to discussing this thing, to have answers, to consider what other people are saying. And, you know, to be involved in the dialogue, because ultimately, what are we out to do? We're out to labor and we're out to win souls for, for Christ. And, you know, we're, we're not going to do it by shutting down the conversations by saying, nope, like we're just we don't talk about this. It's like, well, why not? If it's an issue of the day, you talk about it. I mean, all of the apostles, they set forth that example where they talked about the issues of the day. And mm -hmm. when they had disagreements, they met with each other and said, hey, what? Can we open up the scriptures and figure out what's going on? Because we need to have answers for this uh, sort of a thing. But I will just conclude with saying uh, what came to my mind right away was just the first psalm and the first verse of the first psalm, which is, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And what we saw there was just pure scorn. Mm -hmm. I mean, anytime you see people mocking and belittling Jesus and saying, oh, he's just a guy in a toga and Birkenstocks or whatever and laughing him off like that, it's just, it's it hurts because it's just, have you really ever read the accounts of Jesus Christ? I, I'll be honest, I was, in, I was in a bit of that position not where I was always uh, mocking Jesus, but you know, I saw comedians like this. Where they would make fun of Jesus, and I was like, oh, yeah, 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 because the Christians are stupid, because they believe that old book, yeah. <laughs> but then I went into the Gospels for myself, and I read about it, and it's like, wait a second. This Jesus that I'm reading in the Bible is so wildly different than this goofy character that the world has portrayed. And you come to this realization that it's like, this this is a man worth following. This is someone worth worshiping. And in the end, you, you become like Thomas, where you're like, my Lord and my God, here he is, died for me on the cross. And, and that's real. That's something that uh, it's a shame that some people don't have that because they just can't move past the mockery and they can't move past uh, just, you know, trying to take cheap shots at God. It's just, uh, you know, it's it's disheartening to see that in a film yeah. you know, because it's just, it's not productive <laughs> for anybody really. Yeah. Travis, yeah. any thoughts? Um, this movie will clearly mask the faith that this boy has put into scientists and their fantastical claims about the universe and what happened far beyond he had any ability to know anything at all, or anyone has had any ability to know anything at all. Uh, it's, it hides the fact that people put their faith in science no differently than people put their faith in God. And, and it's not to say that science isn't valuable. 
uh, but but it's going to make it look like the mother and the, the family has no leg to stand on to believe yeah. in God. Wash it down to some picture that, you know, you said you read a, a you know, a, a bit there uh, and, and it talked about how Tom said, I knew I learned everything there was to know about Christianity. And I would argue clearly not. Clearly not. Uh, it, it feels like his his understanding of Christian Christianity is lacking beyond yeah. this wishy-washiness of well we just believe because it's good to believe and then it, and there's no reason to believe it but we believe it like like that's kind of like what how it's portrayed to many of us including myself uh, god makes more sense for this reality mm-hmm. so whatever i pick apart you know whatever i look for truth in god actually makes more sense to me to be the x at the beginning of the treasure map when i trace my origin and the universe's origins and this planet's origins and humanity's origins back to something so if god makes more sense to me all of your claims about what some scientists say that disagree with god's possible uh what we believe to be god's message of truth to us if if the scientists are disagreeing and making their claims and god makes more sense to me I'm going to put my faith in God and not in the scientists and their fantastical claims. Amen. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's um, and and this. I want to I want to key off what, what Matthew said just a minute ago. This is exactly where I was going with this. You can see where uh, th- what's fascinating to me about this is not only what we're going to get into in the future, which and uh, in, in very soon is the propaganda the government has asked him to put into this movie, but also that he Tom has put himself in this movie. You can, you can see right there that he said his mother was religious, his father was not. What's What we see right here is that his mother, this guy's mother, is religious, and his father was not. The log- He's mentioned the logical uh, assumptions of his father, or, what, or, or dad, his deceased father, for this movie. And so it tells me that um, this main character is Tom. And so we can kind of glean a lot about what's going on here, because he's put himself in the movie. And uh, for that reason... Suddenly, in the next scene, we get into our prayers to the dead. Rare we go. Yeah, Dallas. Yeah. I'm sorry, dude, but do you really think we can contact your dad? Well, if we do, then I know he's actually dead. Come on, guys. We just did this. Ghosts contact people all the time with messages. Maybe we have to get personal. You think he's hiding in the dark? Straight up praying. Dallas. Yeah. Come on, Dad, just give me a sign. Hey, man. Maybe we should go skating or something. Let's get out of here. (laughs) Get off, dude. (laughs) So then he goes and he actually, they do actually find something. Uh, And, uh,. They go into that a little further, um, but we're we're gonna pause it right there for a second and and just talk about this because this is a great talking point. Um, the Bible clearly says the dead know nothing. That's Ecclesiastes and nine five and and you and it's it's all over the Bible. I mean, the, you can find maybe one or two verses that are a little confusing, but it's clear as as day that that the Bible says, don't talk to the dead. That's not what we want you to do because there are deceivers just like Saul. What would you consider confusing? What's a verse you'd consider confusing? Oh, I don't keep those in my memory. Let me see if I can find them. I know that there's one where, oh, let's talk about um, um, the Witch of Endor for a second. That's like, the, yeah, that seems to be the one. Because I was going to say, I don't think there's very many verses that trip uh, people up other than the Witch of Endor, which is like, you could just it's so easy to lay this out it's not confusing to me because it's a witch practicing witchcraft offering to communicate with the dead for saul saul knows he is in transgression against the lord it says in chronicles that he was killed for his transgression against the lord because he went and he spoke against he spoke to this demonic spirit with this woman the bible is specific it says it appeared to be samuel it's like i don't know People are confused about that because someone who I think has an agenda 
has introduced the story to them by saying, no, it's just the ghost of Samuel. It's just Samuel coming back and, and saying hi. That's what's going on here. Yeah. When they just ignore all of the context surrounding what is happening. So there's a lot of things. I do think in the Bible, uh, yes, there are some passages that might confuse the whole thing with the Witch of Endor, the fact that that's causing any confusion, it's very, it's distressing to me, actually, because it's just, it's, it's like, guys, if we can't get this down, this most basic biblical example of what not to do down, we are in deep trouble because mm -hmm. the deception is going to be much worse than this. Yeah. 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 Any other thoughts as we go on there? That's uh, this prayers to the dead is something that Christ uh, that the God of even though the Old Testament said hey look I have said there was difference the, the God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament let me make that very clear before I get comments or letters or angry angry notes uh, there is absolutely no instance where we should speak to dead and if we are speaking to the dead instead of speaking to our God that's called idolatry because you're going to something for help that you believe has transcended reality for your help. And number one, you're in trouble because that thing might appear to you. And then who, whatever that is that was that God said not to do uh, might give you information that's wrong or might be allowed to do stuff to your life now that you've given over yourself to uh, listen to whatever it says. I had a person once that went to a seance and they, they, they said um, they gave me a timeline that I was going to be alive and I thought, that's not good. Uh, maybe they wouldn't have had the ability to give that timeline or the ability to go to God and say, hey, she's on my property. Why don't I just uh, give her a timeline? And now she's forever scared until she hits whatever age it was that she's going to die at that certain age. And it might happen. Uh, just because they're allowed now that you've come onto their territory. Don't do it, people. It's it's a, it's it's bad, bad news. So... Uh, it, my rant over. Yeah. Well, talking to the dead is also uh, definition uh, necromancy. Yeah. Do you want to be a necromancer? Anybody? <laughs> I don't think so. No. <laughs> so don't be praying to the dead. It's, no. it's so uh, you could be like the other me. guy in this clip. Uh, the other guy in this clip just randomly, so very randomly, uh, chimes in and says, "Hey, man, you guys want to go skating? Like, 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 like <laughs> mid try to contact the dead." <laughs> This guy gets a hankering for skating. But, I mean, I think that's a much better alternative to trying to pray to the dead. Um, and, and really, like, this this is weaving together so much, uh, this movie, clearly showing what Tom DeLonge is all about, what he's trying, what he's excited to maybe feed you and, and have you sink your teeth into. Um, and, and contacting the dead seems like it's right in that wheelhouse of, 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 of all of it. But yeah, I, I got a kick out of the guy just, Hey, let's go skating. You know, I think <laughs> it's just a, <laughs> I just want to leave, I guess. So <laughs> well, yeah, well, that's the thing. Cause it is an unnatural, even amongst non-believers. So that's something that, uh, I think I could testify to when I was a non-believer and, you know, growing up as a teenager, if anyone wanted to do some creepy, weird Ouija board stuff or like, hey, you know, like I heard a ghost story about if we like chant in the mirror and all that stuff. The majority of everyone there is just like, nah, let's not do that. That's it sounds kind of stupid. There is an instinct, I believe, within us. God has put it in us to re be repulsed by it on a very basic level. It's like if you were to open up your garage door and there's a snake in there, you're like, oh, I'm not going anywhere near that. I don't know. I'm uh, messing with the snake. <laughs> it's the same thing. It's like uh, someone starts trying to do these weird occult practices around you and they have an interest in it. And even if you're not, like I said, you could be have like a secular world. It's just like, eh, it's creeping me out. Not going to want to do that. <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. It's like when people see um, in the secular world, this is funny because my own, my own father, he, he's not a religious guy at all, but I've heard him before talking to him where you know, he's been watching TV shows or whatever. I'm like, oh, you're still watching that show or whatever? No, I had to stop watching it. I'm like, why? Why'd you stop watching it? Eh, it just got a little too satanic and it was weird and there were demons in it. And I'm like, Dad, that stuff isn't real. Why can't you just watch it and just be entertained by it? Ah, I just don't like looking at it. I just don't don't like seeing it. I'm like, this is something at work in you, you know? Like, there's a reason why you're you're upset by it. It's because it's, it is unnatural and it's not right. 
at the beginning of the clip, the guy just leads out and he's like, come on, man, people talk to the spirits or the dead all the time. You know, it's like this fun invitation. Yeah. Like, like I, I mean, he, he knows so much seemingly that is actual and he's sharing it and inviting and telling you what is actual and what isn't actual already throughout these clips. Uh, and what, what a terrible way to invite somebody to do something uh, yeah. we believe so destructive. Just, hey, t everybody's doing it. You know, How, when has that gone wrong? Yeah. Well, it's it's no surprise too, because again, looking at Secret Machines and uh, the guy who he co-wrote the nonfiction with, Peter Lavinda, he's an occult expert. What are they great at? I mean, that's what they do. They speak with the dead to get information. So again, no wonder he's throwing this in there. Um, I have a little plug because Matthew and I are kind of working on the show for Thursday already, and it's oh, going to yeah. be along these lines like specifically because it's going to be looking at near-death experiences and from a christian perspective what's really going on so i'm kind of like holding back all this scripture i have to share <laughs> i've been collecting it all day i'm like do i spill it now no we'll we'll, we'll save it for thursday because we could go on forever yeah. about the state of the dead there's so much in the bible about it it's and not something that you want to be on the fence with in your beliefs, you really got to know for certain the state of the dead and why, because this deception is going to ramp up quickly. Yeah, this is heavily connected to the UFO topic, UAP topic. And if the, you think these things are going to ramp up, which we do too, this stuff, talking to the dead or a dead appearing to you, will ramp up regardless of if you mm -hmm. call it in or not. Absolutely, yeah. it will happen. And yeah, so, well, you, it's, a, it's, a, it's a hallmark, right? Like, God can raise the dead. So it's like in order to convince them that I am God, wow. that I have divine powers, I'm going to raise the dead. It's like I, he has to do it. That's an excellent point, Matthew. Wow, I didn't put those two things together. That's 100%. 100%. Um, and if you guys, I, I mean, let me explain how, how dedicated you guys are. Uh, Matthew and Wendy are doing this on, is, isn't that Thanksgiving that you're doing this on? What day is no, this? No, no. That, that, oh, is that a week from Thanksgiving? Fine. Okay. All right. Well, you're not as dedicated as I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's good. It's going to be a really good show. And I, I appreciate you guys. If you guys want to be involved and all the audience, if you want to be involved, go to patreon.com slash strange normal and join the private discord. I mean, we're going to be doing this all the time. And we put our show notes in there and we, we talk about this stuff. And there's more stuff in there than we can even talk about on the show. You want to be a part of it. You want to support. You want to be a part of this whole thing because the only, we can't do this without you. You ever heard that um, that old Channel 8? Uh, when I was growing up in Nashville, Tennessee, we had this Channel 8. It was the w, w, I forget what it was, but it was the old broadcasting network. They just say, funding and support for this our broadcast is made possible by viewers like you. Well, that's this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I appreciate everyone who has donated and is on Patreon. Back to your regularly, regularly scheduled program. Let's get into this next clip. This is where it gets really crazy because they start spewing out the propaganda. The knowledgeable government guy comes out of the weeds and starts telling him stuff about what the government is actually doing. Check this out. UFO technology. They play with your perception. It's a parlor trick. It's uh, semi-supernatural. A hologram of fire. A burning bush. Okay. How about this? A burning bush that can talk, <laughs> huh? Oh. Makes you think, doesn't it? This stuff ah. is going to alter and shatter any idea you have about reality. And that's true. Now let's go on and see what the else this guy says. We'll talk about that burning bush thing in just a second. For centuries, <laughs> man has told the story of God, how God created the universe. And the universe was a well-ordered place with man at the center. Then man began to ponder, thinking about a spiritual world, a world you can't see, but filled with angels and demons. A story told within all the religions combined. Then came the 1940s, and things began to merge. We discovered a new life form, not human, not spirit, but very, very advanced. We didn't know whether or not they were good or evil, primarily because they wouldn't talk to us, at least not directly. But lately, they've been showing themselves more frequently, and I, I think your father saw them up close and personal on the night that he disappeared.
So then, like what planet are they coming from? Well, it's a bit more complex than that. You ever wonder why the world is such a mess? Why one part of the world is democratic, believes in free will, the other part authoritarian, a loss of individuality, its competing races, and the influence that they have on mankind. So from the depths of the ocean to the far reaches of any mountain range, right to hell up to the, uh, the dark side of the moon. They've always been there. And throughout millennia, they would pop up every couple of hundred years. And they would teach us something important about mathematics or language or science. But we, we hear these voices in our head. We get these ideas, an epiphany. You see, they have been teaching us and advancing us all this time. Okay, there is a lot to talk about in that clip. Oh my goodness. So let me, let me break down what he just said here because I've already outlined it because this was an important one. Uh, the more knowledgeable government official guy that uh, went uh, rogue, I guess, uh, what he said is that the, he, he is saying that they have been here a long time they're not necessarily extraterrestrial. Okay, um, that's that's true so far. And they pop up every few years to give us technology. Okay, and uh, the we receive ideas and, and new uh, things from these aliens or whatever they are. NHI, I, I guess, as the government has been calling them lately. Um, that's fascinating. And he called them the burning bush, things that aren't human but they are uh, uh, not um, uh, spiritual. I, I think that's a little bit interesting. What do you guys think? Any thoughts? I uh, think that he's taking, sorry, I'm just gonna jump in there. I think he's taking his book and he's saying, hey, people aren't really reading it as much as I thought they would. Oh yeah, people <laughs> stopped reading. So we need to make a movie with all the same things, just using teenagers and things that they're interested in because this, this i mean it's the same thing over and over is this the, some you know, of the themes these, that you like, saw in the book when you read it yeah this is basically he he takes all these you know miraculous things in the bible and he says this wasn't god this is aliens and this is aliens and this is aliens and he basically says that there's different races of aliens that have different agendas for us and so that's why they have the good and the bad and they give us knowledge sometimes or they try to thwart our knowledge you know based on the different races and what their agenda is i mean we kind of see that with the good angels and the bad angels it's somewhat true right there is a extraterrestrial beings known as alien or angels sorry they don't they're not from our planet and they're here to help us but they're definitely spiritual to say that they're not spiritual that's a huge deception mm. um but man, again, it's it's just his same plot line over and over. Mm -hmm. And and he's taking all the things that Christians are familiar with to say, maybe you've just seen it wrong all this time. Wow. That book's a little old. Let's show you like from the origin where all these things are happening. And since it's happening in all these different religions from the beginning of creation, it can't be that your one viewpoint is right. It must be a combination of all these things. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, that is in some, the nonfiction book by Peter Lavenda. All religions basically share the same, you know, enough of the same stories that they're, they're the same story played out through different viewpoints wow. and that they've all been fed to us or given to us through aliens throughout the time. Mm -hmm. And as Christians, again, we know that's not true. I have just one scripture I want to read because... Ecumenicalism. <laughs> that's all I want to say. Yeah, exactly. It's just angering me, though. Uh, so it says, 1 Corinthians 2.13 uh, is talking about the knowledge of man versus the knowledge of God. It says, These things we also speak, not in words which man wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. When we look at things through the viewpoint of just mankind and what's going on, 
on the earth and we completely ignore God, we're going to find all types of answers. If we're not willing to accept the truth of the Bible, we're going to grasp at whatever we can to make it fit. So that's what he's done. Mm -hmm. It's angering. Yeah. I, uh, I see this attempt to explain away what is truth, to explain away Jesus, to explain away the Bible, to explain away uh, this book of, you know, guidance for knowledge, for truth. And, and uh, you know, it, it meshes completely with uh, a bunch of stories that are being told right now yeah. uh, to, to a wide variety of audiences. Uh, a much larger audience saw the movie The Eternals, which is a Marvel movie yeah. of heroes that – Essentially, they it, it explains these aliens being superhero pretty much got stuck on this planet and, and then they show up every now and again when they're needed. And every time they did, they would they showed like a little montage that they continually thought that they were gods. So they so they made the Egyptian gods because they interfered and they saw them do something and they said, oh, they made the Christian God. You know, they, they, mm -hmm. they made the, you know, it, it all stems out of the times these Eternals, these alien beings have done stuff. So it's this explaining away. It's exactly that history channel, you know, well, a pillar of fire. What does that sound like? Of course, it's a laser beam from a starship. You know, it's like <laughs> this, this is this is what they this is the direction they want you to go. And, and it just it just seems like priming. I mean, it, and we believe it is. It's priming you for something that you're going to see, poss very possibly, that is going to be something you've never seen before. And then the, it, and then they're going to say, "Hey, this is new. This is something you're uncomfortable witnessing. Now let it be an explanation that makes you completely turn away from what you previously believed to be true." And if that's Jesus, I, I, we all believe that would be a terribly bad decision to make. Mm. Mm. Wow. I have a few more clips here. Matthew, any, any thoughts before I, I conclude with a few more clips? Just uh, that the, uh, the process was interesting. I'll sum it up real quick. Basically, the first thing you do is you mock Christians. You show the whole scene. Christian is off their rocker, doesn't have it. Then a little further on into the movie, you have this guy who is the – revealing truth and you know he's got the truth because he's got a whole wall with pictures on it and all those threads <laughs> connecting the dots <laughs> like a serial killer yeah like that's exactly yeah. that's the guy i'm gonna listen to all right that mom <laughs> get away from me with that bible i'm going into this crazy man's house and i'm gonna stare at this wall full of occult symbolism he's got the answer but that's the guy you know he's got he, he has the answers for the plot of the movie and you just notice it what's the example he gives he gives the example of the burning bush it's not like he's going into any of the other religions you know he go into uh you talk about the hindu religions where they talk about having wars uh the gods had wars and they talk about these big weapons of mass destruction that fits way more in with the ufo narrative than a burning bush that talks what do you mean <laughs> but he's just gonna throw that out there again to try to undermine christianity because that's the end goal is to is to attack those who maybe are not that strong in their faith and they watch this or they're being raised in a christian household and they watch this and suddenly it's just you see how it works it's just such a there's tact to it there really is mm -hmm. and uh this is unfortunately we're working with a, an intelligent enemy uh, but at the same time, you know, we're, we're on the side of the almighty God. So let's pray that he, uh, the, he helps people, especially those who have watched this and maybe you don't have that strong of faith. I could easily see something like this completely just as a teenager or a young person. If you haven't been really seriously challenged on your beliefs, you watch something like this, yeah. you're definitely going to be coming out with a, a skeptic and not a skeptic of UAP, a skeptic of the Bible. That's what's going to happen. Hundred percent. I I just have even more questions. So I mean, like, why the aliens? Why why do they exist? You know, it's like it it doesn't really give me a satisfactory answer unless they're God. You know, right? Like, I mean, unless they're eternal beings, he create. It's like I guess it just creates more questions. But it, yeah, you're right. He stands in front of a wall and acts. He presents it like all oh, the answers are here. Yeah, right. Fascinating. Right. I'm gonna play the next few clips uh, in 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 order because we are way over and i know wendy's gonna be mad at no, me if uh, if uh, if i go any longer so um i apologize to anybody who's like what are we doing because this is unusual we're doing a long episode tonight and i've i always ask wendy to come into long episodes because i know she uh, she likes the short ones 
<laughs> so, so watch this next few clips. I'm going to click through them. Here we go. What do you think he's waiting for you out there? Enlightenment? Peaceful contact? What if you find what you're looking for, Dallas? And it's bad news. What then? According to Dr. Walker, they may not all be bad. Possibly. But they are gods, Dallas, and they can crush us in an instant. Oh. They are only good <laughs> if it serves their interest. Walker is leading you into disaster. So they're gods that only uh, serve their own interest. Interesting. Okay, let's move Sounds on. Sounds right. <laughs> yeah. These are adversaries we know very little about. Jim, you and I both know. They're more powerful and we can't win. We have to use the weapons we have. Free will, morality, consciousness. Oh. Jesus, Jim. We've been fighting this for 70 years and nothing's come of it. Okay. All possibilities are okay. So this is seek. all. This is where it um, really gets interesting because he. Uh, this is his appeal at the end of the movie. He's uh, he's asking everybody to um, to 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 come together as one, and just listen. Spoiler to what he alert, says. Brad. Yeah, here we go. Watch this. Possibilities are layered within different waves of energy, and our mind is the only thing that can make them real. So if everything is happening right on top of each other. Forces of nature can cause them to bleed into one another. Sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not. And sometimes machines are even used to interfere with us. And that's not good at all. But if you could calm your mind, choose love over hate, you will connect to the right frequency. Because if we don't, if we tune into darkness and give into fear, Someone else will create a reality here that suits them and not us. So it really doesn't matter if we call ourselves Christian, Muslim, atheist, or just dreamers. That boxes you in and misses the point entirely. Okay, so religion boxes you in. And for finally, I know everyone wants to say something about that. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Here we go. Here we go. This is the last clip that they're talking about here, and they leave it like this. This is the end of the movie. This is the last, the last thing that the smart guy says. The story you seek, the entire story, it's right there in front of your eyes, hiding in plain sight. A story told within all the world's religions combined. UFOs are the answer to all the world's religions combined. combined. Monsters of California. What a just <laughs> like what a title too. What did that have to do with any of that? Like Monsters of California and if you watch the first scene you'd think they're going to go uh hunting Bigfoots or like something. That was and in it there. It turns out to be this whole thing. Oh, Bigfoots in this movie too. Yeah, yeah. he peed, he peed oh, on someone. Of course. Uh, huh? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, the thing that I wanted to take note of is the fear. Did you see how it was capitalized on fear? Th they're going to label us as afraid, even though mm -hmm. we know that this is a satanic deception. And we're going to call it out like that. And it's important. That's why it's important for us to have very level heads, to have a sound mind and have soberness when we talk about this stuff. Because we need to be able to look people dead in the eyes and say, this is Satan and his fallen angels. I'm not giving them my worship. Jesus is coming soon. I am not afraid of them. I have zero fear in them. You know why? Because I have perfect love from God, from Jesus Christ, who died on the cross to save my soul. And that has driven out all of the fear that I could possibly have. And now all I have is this love for you. And I don't want you to be deceived because there was another instance. And uh, I, I can't like talk about this directly, but a couple years back, there was a big thing that happened, and they were mandating things to happen and saying that everybody <laughs> should get this thing. There was one hmm. personality, one pundit. His name is uh, Keith Olbermann. Ob Do we a need to go to Rumble? Guy. No. <laughs> Do we need to turn off YouTube? No, 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 no. I, I won't drop any of the, uh, the, the YouTube bad words that will get us uh, slapped on the wrist because we can't speak about something that actually happened. 
Uh, <laughs> and what, what this guy did was he said, you're not getting the thing that we're telling to get you because you're more informed. You're not doing it because you're making a stand. You're doing it because you're afraid. You're a coward and you're just afraid. And he was foaming at the mouth and spitting and doing that. I mean, the video is just so nasty of this guy. And it's like, yeah, that's going to that'll sway me, right? <laughs> Start doing that. And that'll convince me that you have my best interests at heart. But it's that spirit that was inhabiting him that is going to make a reappearance, I think, very soon when we start seeing these types of manifestations come and have direct communication with humanity. And we're the ones saying, no, I'm not doing it. I don't want anything to do with it. I'm not going to go along with it. I don't care if the government puts out, hey, uh, everybody, you've got a scheduled meeting. You know, we're all going to have a talk with them because they all want to talk with us. They love us that much. They want to talk to the president and they want to talk to the guy living in the shack, you know, <laughs> down in the bayou. It's like we're all going to get a chance. No, no, we're not because I'm, I'm not talking to them. And it's not out of fear. It's because I'm being obedient to my God. And I also just don't want to do have anything to do with them. Yeah. Really, I don't. <laughs> yeah. That's my point. That's just the fear thing. It really bothers me when they say you're afraid. It's like I'm not afraid. It's like, what the that's the the whole like phobia thing. I don't know. I could go on a little bit of a rant about it, but you know they label things like oh you don't like um all of the the like gay stuff, the LGBT stuff being pushed on your kids. You're a homophobe. So I'm not afraid. <laughs> Where is phobia come into the come into the picture? There's no fear. It's just uh, I have this understanding. And that's where I'm making these decisions from. That's where I'm coming from. Not from a place of fear. That's <laughs> all. I just wanted to get that out of the way. Some key words it's interesting, there. Matthew, because I feel like so many people look at fear as such a weakness, right? But as Christians, we're supposed to have fear for God. Mm. And our right. fear and reverence and respect for God is what makes us stay away from these things. He tells us they're bad and he has our best interest at heart. He loves us. He wants to protect us. And so we do it out of love and respect. Yeah, not out of fear. It's just crazy. But also, that's how they say like at the end there, we're all coming together for love and and all these things. Like don't, don't do these things that have hate. Just focus on love. But uh, knock out Christianity along the way. Like mm. what? Love and Christianity yeah. is synonymous. To, There's no other religion. Go ahead. Do you know what I hear in addition to that? Love is I also hear be a good neighbor because Jesus said to love your neighbor. So it's like they play on this card where it's like, hey, I've I know enough about the Bible to quote this at you. And it's like, you don't even understand. <laughs> Jesus is like summarizing the Ten Commandments there. What's the very right. first thing he says? And then what's the second thing he says? Yeah. If you're not loving God, like you said, if you're not being uh, respectful, fearful of God and loving him first, what hope do I have of loving you as my neighbor? Even if I do something that appears loving and society says what I'm doing is loving, is it love in accordance to God's will? If it's not, then it's not really love. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, the yeah, other religions uh... want to... Go ahead. Go ahead, Travis. Well, they, they, he pushed in there in that, you know, beautiful stare at the sky moment of truth he was having at the end of the movie. Uh, he talked about frequency. If you tap mm -hmm. into the correct frequency, th this is new age spiritual 100%. stuff you will see yeah. in the dark corners yeah. of the Internet where people are pushing you towards elevating your consciousness to become a Christ consciousness that Jesus wasn't anybody specific and special. You can be Christ. You are God. And it's all about yes. this consciousness frequency sort of thing. And it's pushing Nailed you it. that direction. But literally, he's telling you, don't believe Christianity. Don't believe Muslim. Don't believe this. Don't box yourself in, but box yourself into this love frequency, Christ consciousness yeah. stuff, right? Like, like, like. But that's not a box. To box because yourself. we say it's not yeah, a box. Yeah, it's all right. Box. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful and, and and wonderful and loving. Yeah, it's. But literally, the Bible puts forth. There's a God who wants you to know. Wants you to know what is happening, and more than anything, I am convinced God wants you to know His character. And his character is love. Love only exists yeah. to explain God mm -hmm. and the most beautiful way we can act in this reality. And this movie 
is trying to tell you love is this thing, this openness, frequency, Christ consciousness, elevating self, self, selfish. Love is anything but selfish. And if you look in the pages of the Bible, you're going to see an unselfish, other-centered, beautiful picture of God that will win over your heart Mm -hmm. because it is God that you find in the pages of the Bible. And it Mm -hmm. is love in the most beautiful sense that you will find in the pages of the Bible. And when somebody else is trying to steal love from God, the author of love, love itself, and package it to you in this form so that you can buy it hook, line, and sinker, you're getting a lesser version. You're getting an untrue version and you're being led towards something ultimately destructive. But love is beautiful and love is what draws you in. Jesus died on a cross, not because he wanted torture, not because he wanted you to see all the pain. You come to know this as a loving act, the ultimate loving act, the apex of God's display of love for us sinners, for us who have experienced guilt and shame and all of it. And it's and when I hear people ride love home to, to hammer down their deception, uh, I just really want to urge people uh, to seek where love actually is found in the heart of God, in Jesus, and, and, and in very much moving today. God is not done. We're still in the Bible. Like people like to say back in Bible time. We're still in Bible time. It hasn't finished yet. He hasn't come in the sky yet to come and get people. Um, so uh, seek out love in the right, right spot. Seek it out in the Bible. Seek it out with Jesus. 100%. Yeah. yeah. You, you nailed well that. Well said, Travis. Yeah. Um, I also want to say, I mean, like how interesting – they're claiming to have this love and all these answers and the questions to life. But what was one of the first things that Brad showed us that concert? Tom DeLong's like, hey, you might have family, you might have friends, but don't you feel empty? Yeah, <laughs> like, wow. wait, I thought you had love. I thought you had the answers. Why do you feel so empty? Oh, right. It's because you're rejecting the one thing that brings you fulfillment. Wow. You're rejecting God. And that, I mean, it goes to show. The fruit of his life is, is what? He's still empty. He's still hopeless. Mm. Um, I had something I wanted to share, but I'm, I'm curious if that was your last clip, Brad. That is. That is. Okay, so. I try not to mention that, um, though, because. That's, that's that, the, the rule. The faux that's pas the of YouTube, yeah. <laughs> because everyone leaves after that. So I have yeah. to conclude quickly. Just if show I say the it's pictures of Tom DeLong that I sent you in your, in your DM. Oh, I, yeah. That would be a good conclusion. We can keep people just hang on for those images. Is he in a bib? Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't get his bib shot. I just got a, a bunch oh. of him performing, and uh, I mean, it's just like basically the the square and compass is part of his brand at this point. I mean, it's like he puts it all over himself and his guitars. It's just it's oh, got right. it's gonna be weird for yeah. It's check your direct messages. My all right, man. I mean, I'll get my DM. I'll try. I'll try to put um. I'll put that in here, here, but yeah, go ahead, Wendy. Sorry, we completely sidetracked. What's your, what's your comment? And I'll put this in. Yeah. So, um, and I would say a couple years ago when my husband and I first moved down back to Indiana, um, we stayed for a while with my nephew and his family. My nephew was 16, 17 and we tried having Bible studies with him and he was just honest and he'd say, you know, um, I'm just not that interested. And we'd be like, why? He's like, people my age just aren't interested in the Bible. And man, it hit me like straight in the heart. You know, like that hurts. You got to be interested in this stuff. But goes to show, again, like the youth, if they are not grounded in the word, which sad to say, there's not a lot of youth today that are. The media, the all of the internet, all the distractions that the youth have today, we didn't those of us here, we didn't grow up with all the distractions that they have these days. Mm -hmm. And Satan is just pulling the youth like never before. And no wonder, right? Like Travis brought it up that he's targeting the youth. Well, the Pope is doing the same thing. He's going around and having all these youth rallies, rallies, sorry. And he's saying how they're the ones that need to um, be brought into this truth that the Pope is trying to spread. And it just goes to show, um, this agenda is really targeting. And those of us that have youth in our lives, I mean, even if we don't, we really need to keep them in prayer because they're the ones that are going to be really sucked into this. 
I just pulled up a statistic because I was curious and it says, of all US teenagers, only about one in four read the sacred scriptures of their religious tradition weekly or more often. So it's like once a week. And that's not even talking about the Bible. That's just sacred scriptures of their upbringing. So there's this like youth idea of leaving your family tradition, leaving your family religion behind and finding something new. And it's well, scary. Because what is all, all of this media has pushed you towards? Every single story starts out this way. It's like, well, Travis mentioned the hero's journey. That's part of the hero's journey, which, by the way, the guy who came up with that model of the hero's journey, he didn't, I mean, he didn't necessarily say write stories this way, but it was a pattern that he noticed in there. His name was John Campbell. John Campbell hates God, has called Yahweh an unfair trickster God and said that he's evil. So this guy who's acknowledged this model and puts it forth, part of it is that disillusionment because you take someone from a, uh, a beginning point where they have this knowledge and this understanding of how they're going to live, but then an event happens that shatters their reality and they have to learn new things and abandon the old and it's a part of the process of them growing up and attaining to something uh, more meaningful and they're gonna they're gonna get a higher purpose and yeah unfortunately I think so many people just they're gonna fall they fall into this trap where uh, they see well my parents brought me up with this so that's it I'm gonna disregard it and as far as young people too I'm actually uh, the oldest sibling but I got a younger brother and I felt very called when I first came to Christ. I'm not very close with my brother, just like <laughs> for full disclosure. But I messaged him and I was just like, hey, how you doing, man? Uh, you know, I've come to an understanding about this. And I just I feel really called to share this stuff with you. And I want you to see it. And I let him know. I mean, some of the discernment material that I had to show him uh, the media that is consumed widely, how that's satanic. I also just showed him some things from the scriptures and been like, look, this is what is spoken of in prophecy and this is how it's playing out. And and not only that, but look at the way that Jesus is laid for us and all that. And at the end of all of that communication, he didn't communicate back really. I mean, I was just like telling him, you know, he's just like a quiet guy. So he's nodding along and I'm just like, well, what do you think? Yeah, that stuff is all really cool, Matt, but it just doesn't vibe with me. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> do you have, uh, Mike, do you have anything to say about it? No, just doesn't vibe with me. Okay. Doesn't vibe, dude. <laughs> Bye, I guess. Like, what? What kind of an answer is that? It's just, I w it really frustrated me. But, you know, and then yeah. I see him, and he's just, like, got all these, like, shirts on, and it's from these rappers who are, like, just demonic rappers. It's, like, skulls and faces being melted off and demon horns. I'm like, I don't even bring it up. I'm just, like, look at it, and I just, like... Pfft tell my wife i'm like yeah there you go i know this guy i know his whole uh thing and his whole motif is about satanism and it's like my brother's walking around with his logos and it's just like totally cool with it i don't get it i mean this the younger generation in some ways i've been really impressed by i went to a wedding for a young couple that were they're both 18 they got married it was beautiful i mean they're like two bible believing christians it was awesome I, i'm so happy for them really but they are the exception. They are few and far between. Uh, and it's just the majority want to live this hedonistic lifestyle and they want to just forge their own path and they want to embrace a lot of the stuff that uh, I think older generations would have just been like, what are you doing? This is way out there. Yeah, anyway. I, I, I think it's, it's deception. I, 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 I have never met a person that's like, hey, you want to go be evil. Um, just because they want to be evil, it's it's all they they think that this is absolutely um, the right method, because of things like this. You produce videos, you produce music that drive home and drive that direction towards the youth, and you grow up a child in its ways, and it won't leave from it. And I I, I, I you grow. I mean, let me quote the Bible correctly: um, "Train up a child." Uh, the way he shall go. The way he shall go. There we go. And he should not leave from it. So, so I think it's interesting, right? I think that that's 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 what's happening here. And I also have wayward family, and you know, it's just it's heartbreaking because you know, and you you saw it, but you know, it was down a path you didn't see everything, and and all of a sudden, boom! It's 
so hard to um, get back. And so and it's hard to stay composed with your family too. I mean, mm-hmm. I've done a good job of it, obviously. Like I haven't gone off on any of my family members, but it gets to a point where it's just like, they get so dismissive mm-hmm. and it's like, do you not like, I'll listen to you talk about whatever you want to talk about. Really? I will. This is important to me. I know it's Christian. So it's like lame to talk about or whatever, but like, hear me out. Do you mm-hmm. think like, like I've, I've told them before, do you think I'm a stupid person? Have you ever known me? to to be uh, a dumb guy no right okay so why do i believe this why do i feel so strongly about this can i tell you why can i share with you why Mm. and it's just it gets very frustrating when you're met with that type of resistance understood uh, yeah what can you You do at a certain point what can you do well I, i would venture to say that we all have family members that are that way you know we all have people that have rejected our faith and you try to share with them and they don't receive it but i think that's the point i think god gives each family you know light and and that's our job and our job isn't easy um i've been really really uh encouraged by robert his, roger morno his book is a uh, there's a bunch of them but it's like the power of prayer and then there's like even greater power of prayer and there's more stories of prayer and Um, One of the things that he stresses in all of his books is that he has a perpetual prayer list. And so it's all these names of people that he's met along his life that he prays for. And sometimes it's years that he prays for somebody, but it's every day. He just lifts that person up to God. And um, his book is amazing. You know, he's sharing it from the end of his life and how he's seen uh, all these people come to the Lord that he's prayed for, for all these years. And, you know, I feel like, yeah, it's disheartening. It's really hard to see family members reject Christ and not even have interest in it. I'm, I hear you, Matt, like I'm in that boat and it breaks my heart. And I keep just running back to God and like, God, I can't do it, but I know you can. So I'm just going to keep praying and like, keep praying. Don't ever give up on praying for them because God works in mysterious ways. I know, you know, that I'm hopefully I'm saying this for the audience, but he can do those things that we can't do. The Holy Spirit has ways of drawing people out of the darkest places. And the biggest thing I think that empowers the Holy Spirit to move in people's lives is our prayer. Like we're called to pray for people for that very reason. That's our way of partnering with God. And the the beautiful work of salvation is through prayer. And so, you know, we've got a, a great work to do even for our family, continuing to uplift them when it seems hopeless and, they'll, I don't know, you know, they're in God's hands. So they're in good hands when we pray for them. God is aware of everybody on the planet and their current state of belief or disbelief. And he loves his posture of love is towards everybody on the planet, wanting everybody to be saved. And you have an advocate you know, we, we have an advocate. We have somebody who is witnessing to people's hearts, whether you are or not, who's sharing ideas with people, whether you are or not. And are they going to be receptive to it? We're all free. We're, we're, we're all free. But just as you said, prayer is prayer is a tool. People like to make fun of prayer, just as many people in the chat have brought up that Christianity can be made fun of a lot. Um, in, in, in the world, uh, man, my goodness, thoughts and prayers, right? That's become a joke. Um, but my good, you, you're, you're praying to the almighty God and petitioning him to help in specific ways. Uh, and in this unselfish act of giving your time to request these things of almighty gods and, and, and essentially give him a, uh, an end is to answer your prayer. And, 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 and essentially sometimes I'll pray for angels and pray for angels in disguise to witness to people who I am hurting to see their disbelief. Uh, I, I would love miraculous things to change people's hearts, but I'll say as the world gets crazier, as people go further into the world, further into that prodigal son moment of, they find themselves at a pig slop hmm. and you find yourself at a pig slop and you have to come to grips with this situation, whether you're going to keep going with the pig slop, or maybe there is a God that I've heard about, a God that my brother loves, a God that I, that I just, yeah, maybe this God does exist. Maybe this God does love me. And hopefully for many of these people, they get, 
they remember this simple story, but yet complex story that they can come back to the father and the father is waiting with open arms. Mm. And, uh, and, and we want those people to find their pig slot before they get to a truly dark and, and, and maybe a, a place they feel like they can't get out of. But uh, sometimes people uh, in their freedom are going through this life and they're making their decisions and uh, they have to hit a pretty messed up place before they decide to go one way or the other. Uh, and we're all praying for and rooting for people to come to God and come to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, the radio station is going to kick us off air pretty soon. <laughs> so I have to uh, skedaddle. But I uh, did want to show these uh, images before we jet of uh, what's going on. What is this, Matthew? These are, this is the square and compass of Freemasonry. And you can just see it's something that's very prevalent. And like I said, it's pretty much a part of his brand. That was his, like, love. So that, okay, this is, like, an older photo of him. And those are the frets of his guitar. And normally you have, like, these dots that annotate. Oh, so you wow. can quickly look at it and say, okay, that's my third, fifth, seventh, so on fret. His are uh, square and compasses. And, uh, you know, he puts it on his guitar a lot. I see it right there on the bridge beneath oh, yeah. the pickups constantly. Uh, and, you know, you can go on. There's a little... I wish too. I wish I could pull up the other ones, but they're Web P, and I and my my system oh, doesn't let me to do that. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So, That's but brutal. no, okay. they're it's it's just the same image of his, it's just uh, more of the same. Yeah, yeah it, it's but with different guitars and different outfits, and it's kind of him through the ages. You can see there's mm -hmm. like a certain point he gets indoctrinated into this thing, and all the way through up to yeah, like younger guy, and then this one right here, he's wearing the love which that's associated with angels and airwaves. Like that's the most recent thing. He's still totally into it and using it. It's like, his, yeah. I don't know, a charm or whatever. Like he just thinks, uh, so yeah, I mean, knowing this and seeing that he's putting it out in the public, everything we've seen from Tom DeLonge tonight, we got to take it with not a pinch of salt, but a heaping block of salt because <laughs> you do not trust people who wear the square and compass like this. You do not trust people who are like Jesuits. It's just 101 discernment, really. It's some of the stuff they're going to say is true, and the devil knows how to lie. You lie only that little bit. You just give them a fraction of a lie, but you got to like wrap it in a big ball of truth, and that's how you get away with it. That's how you, uh, you fool people. My wife is asking me if we're done already. So <laughs> I suppose we can be done. We got to be done. That's but I, yeah. I did yeah. want to say I'm going to put on the Patreon the full broadcast of what Tom DeLong was saying in that broadcast that he uh, got in trouble for because I thought that was interesting. And if you want to hear, listen to more of this and understand exactly what the government wants him to, to, to say, so we are aware of the deception that is to come. Uh, Join the Patreon, join the Discord, and you too can be a part and uh, be become friends with us. I mean, we want to be more friendly with you, and we want uh, more people to to uh, um, partner with us. Because how else are we going to spread this message without you, friends? Uh, stick around just for a moment. We're not going to do a long show, uh, a post show, but we just want to say good night. And uh, while I just say good night to everyone else, so friends, that's you. Everybody else that's on this broadcast, we appreciate you and we thank you for uh, watching tonight. Join us, patreon.com slash strange normal, and we will see you uh, another time. My name is Brad, and this has been another strange, strange normal. Pure strangest, absolute normalcy, strange normal. We'll see you next time. watching Strange Normal, where the truth is the truth. <laughs>